final Big A game. It's between OU and the Cornhuskers. Nebraska taking the opening kickoff. They ran for 11 yards on a one-hop pitch. That green bobble picked up, made a first down. Now you have come in in time for second and three after a five-yard penalty against the Sooners. So this is the opening drive of the game from the shotgun. It's Mr. Excitement for a first down. Frazier, Brett from the shotgun. They're going to run the sweep like they just did there. They're going to run a draw from there. They're also going to run a counter play, all featuring Frazier as the running back. He runs the ball extremely well, very quick. He's elusive, and he can make the long run. Plus, they say he's as tough as any running back they have. First down, the ball is at the Cornhusker 43-yard line. Frazier with the play call, and now OU gets settled in its defensive backfield. Good run defense that time by Baron Tanner from Athens, Texas, the junior lineman. This defense has done a good job of defense in the run, Brent. 92.9 uh, yards a game given up. That's, that's good defense, number five in the country, in fact. But defensing the run and defensing the option are two different things. The option adds a totally new dimension to def defensive runs, Brent. And if you haven't seen them all year, they're tough to prepare for in just one week. Now on second and ten, he does a lot of audibly. See the fullback move. That's Makovica. There's the cross now. Green, Green finding a soft corner. First down, Cornhuskers. These wide receivers do an excellent job of blocking downfield. Ron Brown, the receiver coach, told me that they average 55 blocks a game. Wide receivers knock down blocks. Again, tight option play. They're going to force him to pitch. Now they have everybody blocked downfield. Wide receivers doing a nice job of blocking. Gives him that cushion to run up for the first down. OU territory. First down at the 43-yard line. The offensive machine that is Nebraska this year. They last lost in Lincoln back in 1991 to the Washington Huskies. Frazier brings the option. Phillips, who's just checked in, his first carry on a cutback. It's a beauty to the 29-yard line and another Nebraska first down. You know how long Tommy Frazier holds on to the ball. Just the last second he pitches it. And they don't want to pitch it back. They want to pitch it downhill because that puts the running back closer to the line of scrimmage. And when you pitch the ball to Phillips, you're pitching to a class running back. This guy is an excellent, excellent running back. Late, late pitch. He didn't force him right there. Now he turns up field. He gets up. He gets blocks downfield from those receivers. And he's a big, strong guy that can put it in the end zone. Here's the seventh play in this drive. The Huskers keeping it on the ground. They have marched to the 29-yard line. Lawrence Phillips for about a yard, and he is hit by the middle. Kelly Craig throwing him back. Now, how ready was this Nebraska team? Well, let me go back to their last practice. You know they had last Saturday off? Their final practice featured what coaches described as 20 minutes of hell. An intense battle. Coaches had to break out scuffles on four consecutive snaps. Afterwards, an assistant coach said simply, I wouldn't want to be Oklahoma. <laughs> Second down and nine now. Demonstrating his athletic ability that time. Play action pass, gets outside, under pressure, turns back. He's a right-handed passer, turns back now and throws this the hard way. Under pressure, turns back and throws a strike coming back at Kent Spring. Real nice job of hitting Mark Gilman right on the money. Hard to do this. Hard to do it under pressure, let alone turn back and throw against the grain like that. Brian Schuster, the Cornhusker fullback. He is in front of Lawrence Phillips. Now Frazier makes the nomination up at the line. Lester Johnson and the whistle. Too much time. Yeah. But when they get down here in the red zone, obviously they put it in the end zone. Dead ball. The lay of the game on the offense. Still first down. <laughs> 
you wouldn't need a red zone. <laughs> Their red zone starts the at the 50. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter with this You button. can see that 60 times, 67 times down there, 54 scores, 45 of them touchdowns. They know where the end zone is and they execute. And they don't beat themselves very often. They're plus 12 in turnovers. Normally, option teams turn the ball over more. So the penalty brings the ball back outside the 15-yard line. First down all over again. Frazier slips a bit. Long pitch. Awkward. Phillips has to reach up for it. Can't really get started because the pitch was up so high. And he's out of bounds on the 16-yard line. And uh, so this is not a typical Nebraska scoring drive right now. Oklahoma and Nebraska are scoreless right now. This is the first quarter. And this is the opening drive for Tom Osborne's Nebraska team, unbeaten through 10 games. This is the 10th play, a penalty hurt, and now it is second down and 15 for Frazier out of the shotgun. And he flares to Phillips. Phillips trying to find an alley and cannot. He's down at the 13-yard line, and it is going to be third down. He didn't get the block he needed from Cluster Johnson that time, the slot man, number 33. Normally, Cluster is a much more efficient blocker. This time, he doesn't make the play. If he makes the block, then Phillips is going to get it down inside that 10 yard line. Checking back in is Mark Gilman. You notice how much more success the defense has had in stopping the stuff they run right on him inside tackle and tackle. It's, they've had trouble with the perimeter plays. Riley Washington is slotted over on the left hand side. Frazier looking in that direction, looking, looking, goes to the end zone and he can't connect with his wide receiver who had run from the slot. That's Riley Washington out of San Diego. And the Cornhuskers settling for a field goal. And Oklahoma, a 33-point underdog, has to feel good about that turn of events. Whenever you can force these guys to a field goal, you've done a good job offensively, especially when they get down there that close. Now, this field goal kicker is pretty darn good. He doesn't miss many. This is Chris Brown out of South Lake, Texas. A freshman, number 35, a 31-yarder. Four for five from that distance this year. On its way, and it's perfect. The three-point goal. Nebraska scores first, but the Cornhuskers settle for a field goal. Oklahoma next at bat. Coming out to handle the ball for the first time here against Nebraska. Brown, who nailed that field goal to put the Cornhuskers up by three. Now, here's the big return weapon for the Sooners, P.J. Mills, and let's see what the Cornhusker kicking strategy will be here today. Mills is standing back near the three-yard line. High and short. The wind held this one up. No chance to get there. And the catch is made at the 26-yard line. And so the young man, who probably is a little more comfortable on the road than he is at home, he's been the target of the Bluebirds. Eric Moore, the freshman, he has one more interception than a touchdown today. Will dash out here to lead Howard Schnellenberger's offense. And the backs and receivers today, Gerald Moore and James Allen, are certainly two talented backs. We take a look at our Chili's lineup for the Sooners of Oklahoma here today. Now first and ten. They bring an end around right away, and Mills is hit at the 15-yard line by Grant Wistrom, a defensive end from the state of Missouri, who was not fooled on that play. Offensive line for OU Dick shapes up this way. Harry Stamps is their best and most consistent offensive line. And Brent, he's a good blocker. Well, the Huskers sure weren't fooled by that. This defense was ready. Farley, one of their leading linebackers, you can see. Nebraska coming up to press at the line of scrimmage, trying to confuse more if they can. 
the left-handed passer out of Dallas back Mills got a great catch at the 42-yard line the spark that OU needed well, Gary Nord the offensive coordinator said they were going to go after him early they weren't going to play conservative they were going after him early and they wanted to get the ball deep and when they went deep they wanted to get the ball to Mills he'll be at the left side of your screen to get good pass protection now you'll notice he's a left-handed passer he sets nice he throws with poise and he gets it over the outside shoulder really tough for Tyrone Williams number eight to cover it nothing to pick up a quarterback's confidence like this hookup with Mills first down out of the 47 yard line he's checking he's audible the formation is strong to the right and the jitterbug Allen out to the 49 yard line so the defensive backs for Nebraska today. Michael Booker there on the corner. And Tyrone Williams is an outstanding corner on that other side. So Howard Schnellenberger comes in here having squared off with Tom Osborne just once. That was when he was the head coach at the University of Miami. That's an unpleasant memory for Cornhusker fans. Because behind Bernie Kosar, the Canes won a national championship in a great football game, 31 to 30. Now Schnellenberger under fire in his home state comes in here. More fires and it's incomplete. Terrific defense that time by Tony Bielan, the free safety from Omaha. Tony did a real nice job. They play a lot of man to coverage, a lot of man to man. My thoughts, for them to win this football game, they have to win the turnover battle. They've got to be plus. They've got to control the clock and keep their defense off the field. Listen, that is their second penalty already today, Coach. They've had 95 penalties against them now. I mean, the numbers are unbelievable. 13 fumbles, 13 interceptions. They're killing themselves. Well, being minus eight in the turnovers as you come into this ballgame, there's no way you usually have a winning season. The only way you can win when you're minus eight in turnovers through a year is have superior personnel, and they don't have that. I mean, here they are rolling along, doing a pretty good job. And then they get hit with a penalty. Second down now in 23. into the end zone for the first score. <laughs> they tried the wide receiver screen. He threw that blindly. Bump and run coverage out on the top. He's going to come down inside now. They're going to try to pick the right here with Alexander, number eight. They threw it blindly out there, and this has been their problem all year. Jamal takes it in. That's the fifth touchdown return from an with an interception for Nebraska this year. Christmas came early. And Brown adds the extra point. And like that, Nebraska leads OU by 10. Booth with us. I asked him what he thought. He said, can't predict it. I'm pulling too hard for the Chargers to win it. Starts at 9 o'clock Eastern time. He's up here scouting talent. I've told him already, take Tommy Frazier. <laughs> Make him the next Cordell Stewart. He listens to me, doesn't he? Coach? Oh, I'm guaranteed. <laughs> Everybody listens to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> except my wife. Yeah. You know, I, I was going to say that, but you beat me to it. I Hopper picked up at the 14-yard line. Good coverage at the 25 yard line. To you know, they kick off a lot during the year, Brett. They kicked off 62 times, and they've only allowed 16 yards of kickoff return. Everything they do in this organization is good. You know, Dick, I want to go back to what I just said jokingly about the next Cordell Stewart because I do happen to now believe that there is a spot open on some teams for an exciting player like Cordell. He's given the Steelers a lift. But you told me something else about Frazier. We'll develop that storyline as the game unfolds right now. The Sooners down by 10 trying to get something going. So they pull and that's oh. eaten alive. What defense. Feeling the free safety is all over the back. 
what effort Jared Thomas, the defensive left end, made that time. He couldn't get right at the play, so he leaps over the potential blockers and comes in from the backside. Real fine effort. Here he is on the top of your screen. Follow him closely. Talk about effort to win. He's at the point. He throws him. Continues up over the top. I'm going to get a piece of you any way I can. Nice job, Jared. Oklahoma with three rushes and minus 11 yards. Gerald Moore and James Allen are quality running backs. Gerald Moore, the last ball carrier. They're going to run out of time. Here. And now yeah. the crowd in on top of them. And timeout is called by the Sooners. Eric Moore will come on over to the OU sideline. Lasting trucks on the road. Chili's Grill and Bar. Chili's Grill's like no place else. Bud Ice at 96 calorie Bud Ice Light. Chilled below freezing for a taste that's smooth to the extreme. And Energizer still going. Long lasting Energizer batteries keep going and going and going. And here in the state capital of Nebraska, the Cornhuskers just keep on going and going. The big red machine. Pummeling OU right now. Second down and 11. Huskers up by 10. Favored by 33. Unbelievable in this rally. And now Moore firing. And it's almost intercepted at the 41-yard line by Michael Booker. Grant Wistrom, the defensive right end, did an awfully nice job of maintaining his discipline and pressuring and keeping the quarterback inside the pocket. There he is right here. They come down to pick him up with the guard. That's Corolo 68. But see, he keeps leverage on the play and keeps the quarterback inside him and still puts pressure on a very good defensive play. And a very controversial finish to the game between North Carolina and State. State had come back to score a touchdown to get within two. Going for the two-point conversion for the tie. Mark Thomas is run over by Fuzzy Lee. The ball may have been intended for Guppy in the end zone. Phillips breaks it up. No call on the play. And a tie would have knocked North Carolina from bowl contention. Brent. All right, John. I'm sure we'll get more on that story at halftime. Here we have had a punt from the end zone. Turn is by Mike Pullman. He is out of New Jersey, one of the many youngsters from the East Coast who have found happiness playing football out here for the Big Red Machine. Tom Devaney got the show on the road, and Tom Osborne has just picked up from there, trying to win back-to-back -back Associated Press National Championships. And Tommy Frazier, 31 and 3. Now let's go back and talk about him because I mentioned Cordell Stewart and you said hey he may be better than that he may be you know we might be wrong in writing him off as an NFL quarterback prospect he throws the ball pretty well yeah you get the feeling that he's an option because of the attack yeah. Nebraska features but you watched him in practice and throwing the ball I mean his touchdown and interception ratio is just excellent batted down is he tall enough to play quarterback in the NFL six foot two two ten and the upper body extremely well built well, here's our Chili's backs and receivers. We've got lots of eye backs. And of course, is the famous running back position. Amon Green is the freshman having a great year. There was controversy in the suspension of Lawrence Phillips. Back with the team now. He has also played today. As usual, there's a great offensive line. You're looking at one of the best. Aaron Graham, all big eight center again. Three years he snapped it to Tommy Frazier. They're very good friends. Frazier now coming down, gets it back inside to the 46-yard line. So this will put them in a throwing spot here on third down. And they, they do a good job of converting third down situations. You know, But they're just as apt to run a quarterback draw. Let me ask you, Jones, good player on this uh, OU defense. Have, have the kids on the defensive side of the ball, they quit yet? Have they got enough no, time? No, they, they haven't quit. No, they won't quit. The deep, Jones is a good player, very good player, but his knee is bothering him a little bit. Okay, Darius Johnson, good one on the corner. Larry Bush not bad on the other side, but Darius can play a little bit. He's yes, on that all big He's had a good career, game. 12 interceptions in his career. Well, Coach, here it comes, third and six now, and uh, Frazier back in that shotgun. Got it. Fires right there to a diving receiver, good 
Lester Johnson from Bellevue, Nebraska, the senior. You know, I was talking to Tom Osborne the other day, and I said, Tom, uh, do you continue to call your own offense? Do you continue uh, to coordinate your offense? And he says, you know, when I quit calling my own plays, like this play right here, and I quit coordinating my own offense, I'm going to get out of coaching. I'll retire. I'm going to do it until I get out of coaching. You believe in that, don't you? Yes, I do. That's first and ten, and Frazier hauling the option. This is Phillips, and he broke the first tackle, but he was cut off beautifully that time. Travian Smith really made a nice play from the defensive end, you know, and at Brent, you know, he's a, not a big defensive end, but he is a state champion in 200 meters at, at 225 pounds, and he showed that quickness coming inside out on that play. My victory key is obvious. Just play the way you've been playing all year, and you win. Forget that. Run the option. <laughs> How about show up? <laughs> Come on, give me a break. Yeah. Come on, quiet. Hey, we've got to keep our producer alive stuff. in the truck I got, uh, we've <laughs> there got we Kim alive. Kim Belton down there. He's your producer. Nice to have you along. Bill Webb, back from the World Series. They did a heck of a job with that. He's our director down here today. They're calling all the shots. Got any complaints? Send them your faxes. Second down and 10 now for the Huskers. See, he's audibling right now. On the left there, help. That's real quick. Three step drop and bingo right into the hands of Brendan Holbein. See, when you run a sophisticated option offense like Nebraska does, you restrict the number of coverages from a defensive standpoint that they can use. It almost eliminates most man to man coverages. So you get those guys spread out like that with three wide receivers, and you just pop those quick ones. Got injured sooner and uh, let's go down and uh, check in on Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, take a look at this crowd. A sea of red, and it isn't for Oklahoma. Of course, it's for Nebraska. Over 75,000 strong, and you talked about the fact that this is the 209th consecutive sellout for the crowd. But consider this fact, if you will. In the state of Nebraska today, this stadium becomes the third largest city in the entire state, behind Lincoln and Omaha. And uh, Jack, this great tradition comes to an end. For the next two years, Oklahoma and Nebraska will play the first Saturday in November when this conference becomes part of the Big 12. Four teams from the Southwest Conference join up. As uh, Phillips has said, there's a penalty flag down, so this one is coming back. Hey, let's talk a little bit about that Big 12. You and I are going down there to Texas, Texas A&M next week, and uh, also the Baylor Bears and Texas Tech will join up with the Big 8. Going to split into two divisions. Going to have the two Oklahoma schools will go down into the South, and so they'll be matched up with Texas and Texas A&M. There are your lineups. And uh, Tom Osborne is the only one who didn't vote for a championship game. Uh, he figures that if you had two unbeaten teams, one in the South, one in the North, you got a better chance to make some big bull bucks. But nevertheless, there will be a championship game, and I think that's going to become a monster oh. conference. Hey, just a look at the conference right now. Those 12 teams, six of them are rated in the top 15 of the country. The Sooners better get better in a hurry, Coach. Okay. they got a lot of work to do. All right, after the penalty now. First and 18, Frazier, it's great time, throws it to the end zone, and broken up down there, Reggie Ball, the intended receiver, and Larry Bush, at Oklahoma, leads your defensive back. Larry did an awfully nice job on that, took him on, one-on-one, -on -one, all the way down the field, no help from the safety, the ball's thrown nicely up there, they both go after the ball, both good leaping ability, trying to get it up at the top, good concentration by Reggie, number seven, he tries to come back down with it, but you have to credit Larry Bush. Nice job there. He's probably watching Michael Irvin yesterday. Did you see that catch in the end zone? I saw the fight. Very oh swift. Going out a little bit. <laughs> Second down at 18 now. Phillips is uh, over to the left. Frazier. And Tommy going to try to run it and see if he can find the scene, but he cannot. Short gain out of.
of bounds at the 32-yard line. The third and long. You see this defense. When you attack him straight away, they tried to run the quarterback counter that time. They are very solid in that front seven. The linebackers, Brent DeQuasey, Tyler Peters is very impressive linebacker, and Broderick Simpson led them in tackle right there. 108 tackles. These kids can play, but the option game sort of nullifies them. But it's tough on a good defense coach. Well, they, they get one to out. Be on yeah, they, they get the one out. The offense has got to get some first downs and nothing else if they're going to play this in the rush. You can't be out the field. I think it affects them mentally as much as anything. Third down now at 14. Tommy, quickly to the pocket. Great protection. Diving attempt. But it's incomplete, and it will be fourth down. Now, he threw that low and out in front a little too far, but there was a defender trailing number 33, Cluster Johnson. He threw it where he had to throw it. Now, it didn't have to be that low, but if he throws it behind him, it's an interception. See, he turns his back in the secondary, now going through the play action. He locates him downfield and throws it out there. Nice touch on the ball. Defender right behind him. He can't throw it behind him. Good, George. That's why he throws very few interceptions. Well, with a 10-point lead on 4th and 14, Nebraska decides to go for it. Against that wind, a little too far out for the field goal. Didn't want to pooch punt it. Frazier's got time high, incomplete, and Oklahoma takes over on the 32. But that's not showing a whole lot of respect for this offense when you just give it to them on the 32-yard line like Nebraska's doing right now. Well, you're looking at an offense that's average 384 uh, yards all year. Actually, their offense is better than it was last year. But they're turning the ball over too many times, Brent, to beat anybody. And then they had blocked punt problems, six of them on the year, four of them returned for touchdowns. Yeah, you know, Howard Snellenberger has had a real headache. But, you know, he's the kind of guy, given time, he'll battle back and get it straightened out. When you're shut out by Oklahoma State at Oklahoma, that is a headache. That is a headache. Bigger than a headache. It's a tumor. First down and 10, and they run the delay now. This is Gerald Moore. You're running a Christian Peter inside there, number 55, the big tackle. That's a headache. Well, a big week of college football continues here on ABC. Tomorrow, there's two big ones for you. Ohio State, Michigan, Florida State. Florida. If you got one of those little dishes, you know, one of those little, you like to watch the NFL, that's a big package. I'm going to tell you, they got the college football up there. Give them a call, and then later come on back and watch the uh, the Skins game, Jacobson, Haven, Couples, Watson. That's always a fun event. Now it is second down and nine yards to go. They'll run the toss, and more uh -oh. eaten alive by Whisper. Woo! What a football player. The coaches told me he was a good play, uh, player. Charlie McBride, the coordinator, said, you know, I've got two fine defensive ends, and they're both back next year. Here he is in a three-point stance right in front of you at 98. Takes it on, good athlete, whips the blocker inside out, good tackling form, bends his knees, keeps his head up, and plants it. <laughs> Rushing yards. Unbelievable. They came in averaging 211. But Nebraska's only been given up 81. 244. What a freshman class that has now become a group of seniors at Nebraska. They're going to look back on this bunch. They're going to set all kinds of records. This is unbelievable. Oh. I mean, they are just dominating Oklahoma on everything that they come up with. They are so quick on defense. That time, two Nebraska defenders, they prevented the other guy from intercepting the pass. They are so quick. Tim Dottry. Back into punt again. He's a sophomore from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Bowman and Benny back deep to return. Nice punt. With the wind in his back and a fair catch made at the 25-yard uh, line. Damon was wrapping that ball up so it didn't get away from him, and now the Nebraska offense trots back on the field. Some Purdue. earlier games today. Mike Alstott with a big one. John will tell you more about that controversial ending to that game on our halftime show. Boston College pulls it out against Rutgers. And on the West Coast, we'll see that game. That's the second game of their doubleheader out west. So they'll look for that coming up because, you know, you want to watch... Princess Diana. Uh, maybe she, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> else, sure you do. Okay. First down and 10 now. 222. Huskers lead it by 10 points. OU's defense is hanging in there. 
doing a good job on him. That was Tyrell Peters, the middle linebacker. He's a junior from Norman, and uh, so far you've got to be impressed with the defensive effort that is being put forth. They've had three opportunities, the Huskers have, for touchdowns, and they have only ten points. Well, when you have linebackers like Terrell Peters that covers the ground like he did on that play, I mean, he has great instinct as well from what the coaches were telling me. Kurt von Vandenberg said that he is as good an inside backer as he's coached in a long time. Now in green, stand up, high back, Frazier. Dancing, looking for an open receiver. Receivers are covered, and Frazier saves a loss, gets it back to the original line of scrimmage, but that was good work in that defensive secondary, Coach, by right. OU. Took the pattern away, and Chris Dishman, the big left tackle, was doing a nice job over there, hanging on, holding. He was blocking Cedric Jones over there on the left-hand side, pass protecting, but it just took too much time. 75, left side of your screen, good pass. He's using the hands. He grabs a little jersey, all offensive linemen do. He battles back. He's sitting up there. Then here comes number 15. You've really got to keep him inside the pocket. So here's the third and nine for Frazier and the Huskers. Four wide receivers. That at the 35-yard line is very close for a Nebraska first down. It'll depend on where they spot this ball. Holbein very close to the first down. You know, and you saw Tommy Frazier under pressure, and he, he, he can handle pressure. The proof of it is he has not been sacked one time this year. Not one time. Now, he's had pressure on him like that, and he gets yeah, out of there. Exactly. He's such a great runner, Coach, that he can get out of trouble and get back to the line of scrimmage. Plus, they don't flush him very often, and you've got to control your rush when you go after that guy. First down at 10, of course, the subplot. Tommy Frazier in that Heisman Trophy duel with the great Eddie George of Ohio State. There's an idea of his running ability for six yards and crashing into the sideline. Real nice job that time by the right offensive guard of pulling and cutting the defensive end that's supposed to take the quarterback. He blocked him. Did a nice job. See, they, they try to figure out who's taking the quarterback. Then they'll block the guy that's taking the quarterback and free him up. If they don't, of course, then he pitches it. There's an idea of how the two match up. Of course, tomorrow, many of you will watch Eddie at Ohio State attempt to wrap up a Rose Bowl. Won't be easy for George and the Bucks tomorrow against that Michigan run defense. They've got some players. There's a pitch now to mine Green. Green for a first down for Nebraska in the midfield. Great job of blocking by Cluster Johnson, the wide receiver. You know, he doesn't make the first down without the wide receiver doing a good job of blocking. Dick, a lot of scouts say these Nebraska receivers block just about as well as any in the country. Oh, oh they do. They, they block better than anybody. Cluster Johnson's at the top of your screen. They get the pitch right there. He's forced it. You'll see it night. There's a nice lead block right here that gets him on downfield. Now, here's another nice block by the wide receiver right there. That gives you the first down. Good effort by Ron Brown's receivers. Final seconds of the yeah. opening quarter. That give you an idea, too, of the uh, tight end, Gilman, who is leading him back out of the way as we come to the end of the first quarter with Brian Schuster, your ball carrier, number 28. Nebraska, 33-point favorite, leads Oklahoma 10 to nothing. Bayline, Brent Musburger, ready to start the second quarter. Nebraska, Oklahoma, right now, Nebraska averaging 4.6 yards a carry. Over the last two years, Oklahoma's defense has held this vaunted running game to 2.8 yards a carry. Nebraska has stepped it up just a little bit, leading by 10 points right now and attempting to win for the fifth straight time. Take a look, Dick, out these uh, overall numbers. Now. Well, they're obviously strongly in favor of Nebraska. You look at this, minus 24 yards rushing right there. Look at this here, total of seven yards right there. The one turnover right here, point seven points, dominated by Nebraska. Now the interception for a touchdown, the only touchdown, it's 10 nothing. Cornhuskers with the lead, and just underway in the second quarter. Frazier to the right on the pitch to Green. Green is nailed. 
beautifully by Wendell Davis from Wichita. See, they're all re offensive linemen are all reaching to the onside play, and Graham, the center, has the tough one because he has to snap the ball, then rush, and he's looking right there. He gets the knockdown block on Baron Tanner, number 92, but somebody else didn't get his block out the perimeter, and he makes the nice play right there. Wendell Davis, number 28. So Jesse Cush out of Columbus, Nebraska, hunting, and the Sooners defense doing its job again. Maybe P.J. Mills get something going here. Only giving up a half a yard per return effort. On the breeze, into the end zone, it'll come out to the 20-yard line. I spent a day and a half trying to find a weakness in preparation in Nebraska. I thought maybe they don't cover the punt. Well, half a yard per punt return. We'll be right back. Nebraska leading Oklahoma. 10-0 here with 13 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter and a new quarterback for the Sooners. Senior Garrick McGee, number eight out of Tulsa, checks in. He replaces Eric Moore, who was ineffective. So here's the first snap now. Gerald Moore is in a running back along with Allen. McGee throwing. Got a man wide open to Mills and out of bounds at the 42. Break down into coverage, his first pass. They burned the Huskers. They ran a wheel pattern, slot out and up, and Tyrone Williams, number eight, who ended up outside there, turned to the other defender and said, hey, you're supposed to stay with that guy. Stay with him man-to-man -man all the way. Now they're, they're shaking hands. No one's mad at each other. But it was a good job. They gave him time. He got outside the pocket, hits his first one. Good confidence program. That's a 22-yard gain on McGee's first snap. This is Allen, and he pulls his way in up three yards out to the 45 yard line and so there's Howard Schnellenberger in his first year as head coach at Oklahoma and uh, Howard didn't have to buy any new sport coats you know Louisville they had yeah, the just red coat yeah. he grabbed a handful and said come on let's go he does, you know, Kim Dalton said he does look a little like Captain Kangaroo. Oh, I don't think he'd appreciate that. <laughs> well, no, Captain Williams was a good guy. Did you ever know Captain? No. Captain was a buddy of mine up in Chicago. He was a dandy. I thought he was a language factor coach for the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> Get down. And seven now. Oh, here's McGee. Offensive line. Holds up. McGee fires. Hold diving down. reception. And they're across midfield. Got that ball to Juwan Penny on the out comeback. And he only got protection. And now it didn't take very long to throw the ball. He had man-to-man -man coverage. He just gets back quickly. Be to the left side of your screen. Tight, tight coverage, but he came back for the football nicely. That's a major, major accomplishment. The Sooners have crossed midfield. Yes. Huh? You, they, they get one the board. They, they, they can get excited. Third down. It's a long yard now with Rose in front of Moore. Oh, Moore is hit. Nothing doing. Is. They were ready for that. The middle of the Husker defense just ate him up that time. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, I think he called a linebacker blitz. They got there so quick, they couldn't have read it that quickly. They just came in and took it on. And Doug Coleman, 46, is their best inside run defender from a linebacker standpoint. And he attacked that one. Boy, he shortened that running back's neck. Now, Dottery in the punt. If you're thinking, why not fake it down by 10? No, sir. That defense playing pretty well. Go ahead and see if you can play a little field position here. Who knows? Maybe you get a break. Looking for an angle. You can see why he's the number one in the Big Eight. He'll be right back. There he is, definitely. But the man has done an excellent job in the past at both Miami and Louisville. I tell you what, I think one of his problems was at Oklahoma is he made too many promises early. I think, I think if you come in under the cover of darkness into a program like that and say, hey, they had it going here, we just hope to improve, but like he was promising on a national championship right off the top. Came back to haunt him a little bit. Well, the Huskers are pounded away. Dick? You know, I talked to him about that, and he said he had a choice, and he was taking a chance, but he wanted to be positive. 
He saw that he had some pretty good football players there. They hadn't been in his program and disciplined his way and worked his way and all that kind of stuff. But he thought he would go positive, and he said it backfired on him a little bit. But now, he, he can't really question his ability as a football coach. No, 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 Super Bowl no, no. rings and NCAA championship ring, you know. Quasi, number 47 out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, is all over. Ball there. By number 15, Tommy but the Jackaroot, you know, one thing about this Sooner team looks spelt to me. It looks like it's in shape, kid. Maybe I should go to camp with him. Well, maybe you should, especially if Howard Schnellenberger comes over to take over the controls. The first thing that Schnellenberger did was challenge the team as a whole to lose 1,000 pounds. Now, he's a man that says what's on his mind. When he met J.R. Conrad, the all Big 8 tackle for Oklahoma, First thing he said, nice to meet you, son. Boy, you're too damn fat. <laughs> well, you know, the strength coordinator is Mr. Green Jeans. All right, it's third down and five now. And Frazier incomplete. It was dropped at the 40-yard line. Ball should have been caught. Should have been caught. They don't, they've only dropped nine passes the entire season. They, kept, they dropped this one a little counter pass bootleg action john bedrill coming across the middle throwing a little bit behind him but john bedrill has made that kind of catch before well, oklahoma's got to be pleased with the way the defense is playing absolutely i mean their defense has given them a chance nebraska with three scoring opportunities basically got a field goal i mean the touchdown came off a turnover by the offense so this defense is keeping right. Mills doesn't want anything to do with it. And it takes a Nebraska roll down to the 21-yard line, where it will be Sooner's ball. Garrick McGee taking over the Sooner offense, and this defense is given OU a step by step. Remember that one now. That's going to be at a uh, special time tonight because ABC is the only place where you're going to see Princess Diana's candid and revealing interview. Complete and uncut now. Barbara Walters and ABC News host a special turning point, and that's one you don't want to miss tonight on the network. And now it is first down. The Sooners come up, and here is Moore, number seven. He's belted at the 19-yard line and goes down. Gerald Morris had a good year coming into the ball game. He had 962 yards, he 38 to be a thousand-yard rusher, becoming the 12th thousand-yard rusher in the history of Sooner football. Short, stocky, tough guy. Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, at the, at the conclusion of the game, as you know, we'll select a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship fund for America's colleges and universities. That is very much appreciated. Second down and nine, and now McGee makes the call. A little bit offset to the right. More of the running back will stay in. Wide open is Penny over here. That coverage was awful loose over there, wasn't it? They were man-to-man. -man. Backed off, showing respect to the wide receiver. He sees it, he audibles, he says, I'm going to take what you give me, throws the quick one. Now, Garrick McGee had a fairly good year last year, but he missed all of spring practice and half a training camp this year with spinal meningitis. So he came in, not anywhere close to being the football player he ended the season at last year. Dickens, third and one. Moore is right behind McGee, and this is Allen. He got the first down. The Sooners, and uh, that's an important first down oh. to get out of that hole and keep the ball right now. Plus, keep the offense off the field, keep their defense off the field. And James Allen is capable of running better than I have seen him run on the tapes this year. Yeah, you liked him I first time when we were in here a couple years ago. 81 yards of first half rushing last time we were here. Yeah. I mean, he can run. He didn't show that flash. I don't know what's gotten what into him. What do you him. think? He's hesitating, or do you I think that attitude problem? Maybe I don't know. Get up in that hole and explode. Coach says you got the talent. First and ten. McGee is hit on the release. And that caused him to be off the money with that. Davis, 28. And uh, Grant Wistrom is the one who gave him a pop. Here's your fellow Wistrom who yeah. gets in on him again. He has so much quickness, and he can accelerate coming off the block, and they very seldom allow a quarterback to throw the ball without knocking him down or, or harassing him as he throws it. This defense is 
so quick. They actually play six defensive backs all the time. The two outside backers are really safety size type people. They're coming after him. There's the tight end. I was waiting for him to find. There's the leading tight end in the Big Eight. That's number 80, Stephen Alexander. He's out of Chickasha, Oklahoma. And they finally put the ball in his hands. Now, if McGee will do that and use his running backs, Coach, he could be in business. Here he is. He comes out and comes back underneath. He's a very good receiver. He's a good blocker. He's also an excellent student, all Big 8 academically, one of the highly recruited kids in the country. He gets underneath Beelan, number 9, gets the first down. They want to highlight him and get the ball to him. They haven't tried getting the ball to him enough so far. First down, Nebraska 10. Uh, another mistake. Conrad, you're not academic, all Big 8. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting break. Got to move snap count. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Yeah, you're saying you don't have to be a five beta count. No, you don't have to. Just concentrate. Just concentrate. After the penalty, that brings up first and 15. Drives Howard crazy because he's such a discipline oriented coach, you know, and his, his teams are known for their discipline and their toughness and how hard they play in the fourth quarter and all that. And he just hasn't gotten to that peak this year. Time will. Tell. He'll get him that way. Now it's first and 15, and McGee is back with the shotgun. Incomplete. Too far in front of Mills, who was being pursued by Jamel Williams, who intercepted the pass and dashed in for a touchdown in the first quarter. An easy throw. Not very far away. If you're going to move the ball against a good defense, when you have a guy that's got a four or five yard distance between you and the closest defender, you got to hit him in the belly. Otherwise, you lose. That's been their problem all year, pass offense-wise. 46% complete. That's the lowest we've seen in any team this year. Well, let's see if they can find Mills or Penny now. Alexander's the tight end. They'll hand it off to Moore and try to ambush him with a run, and it was a good call, but it still will leave them in third and long. Remember, they were in second and 15. Gerald Moore shows that flash, that short, stocky body, 5'8", 226, a junior out of Houston, Texas. He shows that he can make the long run. Had a 72-yarder this year. Well, Dick, here comes a third and five. Would you come back with a running player and try to find that tight end again? No, I'd, use, I'd emphasize the tight end because they're playing man, so that they have a linebacker man-to-man -man on the tight end the way they've been playing the coverage. That doesn't mean they'll play at this time. They do now, right now. Jamel Williams is locked on him man-to-man. He's over on the right-hand side. McGee's looking. He's got him down the middle, but he didn't see him. Instead, he goes to Mills and it's intercepted at the 34-yard line, picked off by Booker. Booker across midfield to the 44. He had Alexander open in the hole, comes back to coverage, and it's intercepted by Nebraska. You'll see what Brent's talking about by taking a look from the end zone. The tight end came off inside. Worked up behind the linebacker and turned around and looked at the quarterback saying, hey, I'm open. I've got to just get me the football as he comes down in here. Instead, for some reason, he comes off him. He comes off him right now, throws it to the outside, sitting there waiting for him. They win zone coverage on him. Good change up by Charlie McBride. Now, Dick, now we get a chance with Phillips in. This is where Nebraska goes for the juggler. Frazier with a good fake has got time. Comes down. He wants Phillips, who's covered. It's going to be second down. Frazier read that perfectly. He saw that the defense had picked it up, and Larry Bush was running with him, and he didn't want a chance of interception. You know, in that play, many times you can break down the discipline of the defense with that kind of play. That shows how well coached the defensive team is that time. Larry Bush stayed within the discipline, picked the back off counteraction, boot action, out of the backfield, picked him up, and stayed with him. Did a real nice job. And these guys, when you turn it over, as you saw by that graphic, they usually put it in the end zone. Well, we don't know if the Sooners can hold up here at the defensive end, but so far they have played awfully well. Have not given up a touchdown yet. Quick hit. Tackle is missed before Fogle finally brings the receiver down, but it is a first down. Reggie Ball just catches the little quick one, just trying to get the first down. See, they come down the line of scrimmage now with an option. Defensively, do you play it as a run or do you play it as a pass? See, corners are backing off like there. He settles, ball thrown right on rhythm, right on time, right where it should be thrown. Good running ability, first down. The ball is at the Sooners' 32-yard line. And the fullback is hit by 
Cedric Jones, number 57. Now, when Cedric's healthy and he gets up a full head of steam and he comes to play, he's a dandy. He is as good as, or, you know, he's the best one in the Big Eight, really. Set a school record for sacks here. Number three all-time sacker in the Big Eight, but he's been banged up. He's had a sore knee. And Howard Stellenberger says, when he says a guy is tough and a good football player, he is tough and a good football player. Now, he played in a 30 defense last year, playing tighter on the offensive tackle. This position ought to be more favorable to him because he has good quickness and power on a little wider alignment position. The Rascal calls timeout. Cornhuskers with a timeout. Osborne and his staff will talk about it. Tommy, come on over here. Bring them all over here. We got a timeout. We're going to take you down to the Southwest. Let's see. We close out the Big A. Dick, you and I close out the Southwest next week. Texas, Texas A&M. Looking forward to that. Texas with a good game. Great defense last night. Florida and Arkansas. The SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper in prime time. A week from Saturday. Second down and 11. And they run the fullback. Back in the next straight ahead. And Jones there again defensively. They, they ran the first trap play they've run. Now they've been getting a lot of pursuit by those defensive linemen inside linebackers getting out in the perimeter in the option. So they come in and try to make them stay at home with a little trap blocking up inside. They almost popped it cleanly. Nebraska favored by 33 points. Leads it by 10. Five minutes to go here in the first half. Oklahoma really looks susceptible to the reverse. Frazier throws back in completely. He was slipping as he released the ball. Under pressure all the way. All the way. Martin Chase, 93 defensive tackle in there, playing hard from the bright spot. And that's coming up at the half. The Burger King Scholar Athletes of the Week Awards. John Saunders will have that. After all that turkey, maybe some of you are ready for a burger at halftime, huh? 53 to go. Nebraska lead at 10-0. And it is Chris Brown. He's a good one. One field goal today, Dick. And now his, uh, this will be a four, he's got the wind right at his back. It's a 45-yarder with that stiff breeze. And he just pounds. No good. He doesn't miss many. Came in 10 for 12. He was 11 for 13 when he kicked that. Now holds a school record for points by a kicker. You know, if you want to be a good scoring kicker, come to Nebraska. They score a lot of points. A lot of extra points. I, gotta tell you. I don't know if Howard's team can find an offense. But I'm here to tell you they're hanging in there. They're, they're hanging okay. tough. Hanging proud. So that's one time that the interception does not haunt Oklahoma. And now McGee takes over on the 28-yard line, trying to get something going on the pump fake. Right, Mills, one-on-one, yes. got, got it! At the 41-yard line! See, they ended up in man-to-man -man coverage. Good call by Gary Nord. They were all singled up. Defined for the quarterback. He knows exactly where he's going for the football. I'm going to get it to you, Mr. Mills. Here he is at the wide receiver position. Y'all, you see him locked up right here, locked up right here with a free safety. So it's one-on-one. -on -one. He runs play action. He takes him up to the outside with a little stutter move, and he throws the ball, and he also demonstrates a burst of speed. Now it's Allen behind Rose. Allen steps to the outside, picks up maybe a couple of yards. And he made a mistake. He should have gone up inside. The big guard, Carollo 68, was pulling up in there to get the linebacker. He bounced outside the kick-out block. Stay with the discipline of the run and only get outside if they force you outside. Now Gerald Moore, the junior from Houston, back into that backfield along with Allen. Man's had an amazing career. When you think about this football program in Nebraska, think a little bit about the basketball program in North Carolina. Both these guys, Dean Smith with the Tar Heels and Tom Osborne with the Cornhuskers, they just plug it back in the next year. Now pulling out, dashing to the right is McGee. He's going down, and he throws it out of bounds, and there's the penalty flag. The pass from McGee. That was Tomich, who had the quarterback in his grasp back there. He must have had the helmet or face mask because that was not a personal foul type foul. What's he called? Roughing the passer? Let's listen to the uh, referee Turley to sort this one out. I think this is a grounding foul. Okay. Grounding! Five yards! Okay. Off of okay. I don't even know, think that should be called grounding. 
there was no receiver in that area. Deeper, though, there was, you know, and being uh, harassed like he was and trying to throw the ball Let's off balance. Look. See what you think. I don't think anybody was over no, there. See there. the tight end out there and see the guy right there? <laughs> yeah. yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Excuse me? No, he Coach, just he's that. over there on the other side of no. the frame. That's a good call. Oh, all right, good thank call. you very much. Good call. It's hard to get the coach to say something nice about one of my zebra buddies. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was yeah. a decent call. All right, here we go now. Lost it down, too. That really hurts him. So it's third down and 22. Not going to get away again because of Tomich. Jared Tomich is not being blocked. Uh, he's, uh, he's really earning the scholarship today over there. Matched up on that offensive right tackle, Jar Conrad. He came into the ball game with eight sacks, 19 quarterback hurries. Here he is coming out. Now, see, the tackle did not get a good set, did not get a good set on him. And that was Bruce McClure, a backup tackle, playing him on that time. And boy, that's tough. So, Dowtree, this is a team that had six block punts. And that time, they were close to getting a piece. Farley was in on top of him. It is hard to believe that the Sooners would have six punts already blocked this year, and this was close to being number seven. Take a look now as Farley comes crashing in for the right side of your screen. He just barely gets it off, and it's off the side of his foot, and the Huskers will take over on the 40-yard line, leading it by 10, 316 to go. Keeping it on the option. First down, Nebraska. See what they do now is they start blocking the guy that's been making the quarterback pitch on that load option play like that. They pull the guard as a personal interference man. Here he is right here. He will pull around and seal. Now they can't get right in his face and make him pitch. See, he gets out there. That, that SK, he blocks the guy that's supposed to take him. Now just good speed and acceleration. He gets through the perimeter. Across midfield to the 49-yard line. Frazier back up. Green is the eye back. And Frazier pulls out now. Goes deep. The whole line incomplete in the end zone. Again, very good discipline by the secondary. They just stayed at home a lot. They were not pulled up. Not pulled up at all by the play-action fake. That's Darius Johnson. You know, he's one of the better corners in the Big 8. 29 yard rushing, 60 yard. Actually, it's an off day so far. That's just exactly what Eddie George was saying. Yeah. <laughs> Good. It's a great duel. Tommy brings intangibles, and George brings statistics. Oh, Tommy was hit just as he handed that ball off. They came right back on up the middle with Schuster. That normally happens when you try to cross block a tackle who takes a slant to the inside and the offensive tackle can't get down to him so he gets that penetration and on that tight handoff type play the quarterback gets lunch. After a gain of six that brings up third down and four with the ball on the 43-yard line. 223 and Oklahoma's defense doing a standout job here in the first half. They have not yet given up a touchdown to this high-powered offense here today. The only touchdown came on a Nebraska interception. Nebraska, one of two in the field goal department also. Frazier now, pitch out on the ground, and out of bounds is Nebraska's ball. So that time, with Fogle over there, if they just could have gotten an artificial turf hop. And uh, John Saunders, what you got coming up for us? All right, friends, thanks a lot. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, we'll take a look back at the history of the Big 8. Also, an in-depth look at Steve Spurrier, the head coach at Florida. We'll also have some scores, so stick around. It's all coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report. Brent, back to you. John, we had quite a ceremony at coin toss. Three Big 8 commissioners were here. Carl James, who's the commissioner now, and before him, Chuck Ninas, Wayne Duke, before Wayne became the Outstanding commissioner of the Big Ten, all three out at midfield. It was a nice moment, brought back a lot of great memories about what has been one of the 
great conferences in college athletics. Coming out on the 20-yard uh, line. Boy, you get that the Nebraska breeze at your back when you punch from right to left or kick off or go for a field goal. It's really taking off here. Watching him do that same thing on the practice field Thursday, he was excellent at pooch punting, getting it way up in the air and dropping, but the wind wasn't blowing. We got 145. What's your overall thoughts about Schnellenberger and Oklahoma here on this first half? I think they've done a great job. I think they have to be excited. I think the morale, the defense has to be very good. They've got to find a way to get some kind of consistency within the offense. They sputter. They get a first down, they get a first down, and then they nothing. They've got Allen out here on a wing in this formation. And McGee throw back screen. Throw back on the screen play to the tight end, Alexander. Alexander rumbling out to the 35. That's kind of play you wanted? Gary Nord coming up with a very good play that time. He said they were going to use some gimmicks. They didn't want to consistently try to beat him physically. Plus, that kind of a throw is an easy throw for the quarterback. You should throw that complete. What you have to do is fool him, and they fool the defense. Minute and a half now. Nebraska leading, but only by 10 here. Receiver now he throws for Alexander who was just now there is the intentionally grounding. He just threw that thing down I mean, there. He just threw that thing out of there. Holy. But but you see that number 80 is an eligible <laughs> receiver, coach. Yeah, it's okay. He didn't even try to throw it to him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even try to throw it to him. Defensively, Charlie McBride came in the ball game concerned about uh, containing their quarterbacks and not. That's an orange jersey I saw over there, not a red one. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10, Alexander, the all big eight tight end. He beat out Mark Gilman of Dallas Bell, who plays for Nebraska. Dallas Bell is in my ball. Second down and 10 now, and McGee from the shotgun trying to set that screen. And now he throws that one away. That's intentional grounding. There was no one. The referee was looking upfield and didn't realize that there was no one back there at the reception end, big offensive lineman. They were trying to get the screen back out. They picked him up right now. The defensive lineman read it, the linebacker read it, Jamal Williams, number 28. There was no one to throw the screen to. He actually should have thrown it in, in, to try to prevent from getting it called. Fortunately, the official didn't see it, but he should have thrown it a little bit closer to the receiver area on the ground. Do you think Howard can find Bernie Kosar at halftime? <laughs> Third down and ten. He's gonna play a little double zone, looks like here now. No. Nope. Low and incomplete, and now the Sooners will be punting and hold on, America. This has not been the strength of their program this year. There's one ten to go, and there's a penalty flag down. A late penalty flag comes down, and I think it's against the Sooners. Let's find out here what's gonna happen. some kind of a penalty on Chuck Langston, 75, the offensive center. Dead ball, partial foul, the offense, four foul. Jeez. You know, you've got 11 guys on the field, 10 of them battling Mike Mad to move the football, then you got a guy that creates a stupid, stupid foul. Jeez. You wonder why they're not scoring? a return type ball, those low ones, Brent. And it's picked off by Benning, number 21, and Benning trying to get to the left side, and he is down at the 42-yard line. The Huskers are left with less than a minute. Poor communication back there. They should not be close like that. Two guys trying to feel that. One guy feel that properly, one guy blocks. They have a good return. I can feel a few folks in Gainesville and Columbus, Ohio, All right. saying, hey, wait a minute. Nebraska who? We've been here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, give credit. Give credit to Oklahoma defense. Frazier had his receiver cut off beautifully, and now he takes it away. Did not give Oklahoma a 
a chance for an easy interception that time. They wanted the wide receiver screen. The coverage rolled up into it. Good discipline on the coverage. Couldn't throw it. He runs, makes a quarterback draw out of it. to go. Nebraska working with a couple of timeouts. The clock stops in college and push on a first down. The zone is almost too loose, Brent, to allow those crossing patterns like that. They're going to have to look outside in and look for them. Nebraska loves to run crossing patterns. Sideline, and that's Reggie Ball. He calls timeout, stops the clock. See, he didn't get out of bounds with it. 17 seconds left. Timeout here. Huskers trying to put some more points on the board in Lincoln. The direct snap. Phillips up the middle explodes. 20 cuts to the right. And Phillips is out of bounds at the 11-yard line. A direct snap trap play. I'm pretty sure the right offensive guard, Steve Ott, 69, pulled and blocked across the hole. Good call, good change up. Tackles coming wide. Here they are. They come across and trap it. There he goes. Oh, what a nice hole. Good blocking right there at the point. Then fine, fine running ability. A lot of room to demonstrate that you can run. Very, very loose zone. There's a page from Warwick Dunn's playbook down in Seminole land. And, of course, Florida State with a big one in Gainesville tomorrow against the Gators of Florida. Now on first and ten. Ten seconds to go. The clock moving. Frazier in the clock stops with five seconds to go. The Nebraska coaching staff must make a decision with five seconds to go. And it appears that it's already been made. Coach Osborne did not hesitate. Here comes the unit onto the field right now. They will kick this field goal from 11 yards out with five seconds to go. They're not going to give up a scoring opportunity. I'll tell you this, they have an excellent fake in the game plan. An excellent fake in the game, and it's an audible. If they do it, it would be to the right, as if I remember the part. 27 yard line, they're going to kick it with Brown. He's got this one. So Brown is two of three, an intercepted pass for a touchdown, and Nebraska leads Oklahoma 13 nothing with one tick of the clock left before the intermission. And a reminder that coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders is going to have scores and highlights, plus a look at the Big 8 Conference and up close and personal look at Florida coach Steve Spurrier, who is one of the masterminds in college football today. No one moves the ball down the field with the passing attack any better than Mr. Spurrier. Nobody does. And, I mean, and, and he could do it with a second quarterback. He puts the, gives the guy a rest, the starter, and he puts the second guy in, and he breaks the school record for throwing, you know? Yeah, he does a great, great job. Well, that was a fairly impressive drive, Coach. It was a good drive. Good very, ball on the direct snap of the Yeah, ball. very good drive. They have so many weapons in their offensive package, and it varies, and, and they'll make some adjustments, but the defense has done a real good job. I think the defense is really pursuing hard. They've got to come back with some counteraction back away, you know, like a reverse and that kind of stuff, to just make them concerned that that might happen. You know what's tough for Schnellenberger right now? Let me tell you, he was shut out in his last game by Oklahoma State. Now he's gone a half without scoring. These guys have gone six quarters without scoring, and I mean, it just has to be driving him crazy because he's wasted some good defense here. Good idea, just to put it That's down. Oh. The first half, it's going to be 13 nothing. So the number one Nebraska Cornhuskers take it on to the locker room, leading. 13 nothing. Take it away, Mr. And uh, Dick Vermeil, overall, the defense resulted in the only touchdown of the game. So well, the interception on the wide, wide receiver screen, and Jamel Williams just runs it in for, the, like you say, the only score. So we can take a look at that replay, which we've got. Eric Moore, look, he throws to his right blindly, just sets up and throws it out there. Wide receiver was coming outside in, and the wide receiver ends up to be Jamel Williams, the outside linebacker. So we get set now for the 
second half. We take a look at what Tommy Frazier accomplished. He was he was pretty quiet in the first half, Coach. He really was from what I expected, but I still am giving credit to the defense. Tom Osborne told me this was the best defensive front seven that they will have faced all year, and he is right. Well, for Nebraska to win, I said they had to play with concentration, and they've done that. Run the option, no turnovers, uh, they've done that. A shut down the Sooners rushing game, boy, they have done that, but they just haven't gotten many points. Nebraska kicking it off to start the second half. The short man's down right there at the 24-yard line. That's Keith Sparks, number 29, and it's there. The Sooners will see if they can come up with an offense, Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, you know you said before we went to halftime that maybe they could suit up Bernie Kozar. Well, they've got Bernie Kozar as part of the Oklahoma program. They've got Jim Kelly. They've got Vinny Testaverde. But it's on covers of Sports Illustrated. Coach Howard Schembechler uses this frame to try and entice recruits. Only problem is right now, that empty space, he doesn't have another quarterback yet. Oh! On the snap, recovered by McGee, and Bo Schembechler ain't taking credit for this offense. <laughs> no. I got news for you, partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Our guy, Mr. Schnellenberger, over there, I guess is pretty easy to get. Uh, he can't believe himself. For Oklahoma to win the game, I said they had to win the turnover battle. They're minus two, control the clock. They're behind there. Keep yards game following a pitch to a minimum, 134 yards rushing. But they've done a good job on the option. Here's the draw, and it's Moore, alley left side. Can't get squared up and get it turned up no, field. No. The, the defense moves so well inside out, Brandon. They're so disciplined in their drops. When they read pass, they get back there. They come to balance, and they attack the run. Oklahoma possessions. It wasn't much, folks. They were scoreless. No way they can be tired. <laughs> it's been that way all year, really. safety's played himself a good game. McGee hit on the release and this one incomplete. Mills and a penalty flag is down and so is McGee. He took a good shot. Gary Nord elected to go for the big play on third down. Gary took a nice shot. He's vulnerable. When you set up and concentrate downfield like he's now, he's all the way opened up and boy, he got that knee right there. Jason Peter, the defensive tackle, 95, came up underneath. One of the two brothers here, Jason Peter and Christian Peter, the third brother who plays at Notre Dame. He was injured at Notre Dame or prior to getting to Notre Dame, actually. He's here in the stands. Holding, Holding. on the offense. Decline. Fourth down. You know, you're aware of that Peter's story, right, Coach? The yes. fact that uh, that young man went to Notre Dame and uh, he was the biggest of the three brothers, and he suffered a very unfortunate accident diving into Hold a it. pool. And uh, when he did, it jammed his neck, and he's been unable to, to play football again. Still a student up at Notre Dame, kept his scholarship. There's a halftime stats. Well, you can see he's dominated totally here. Look at this, minus seven yards rushing, the minus two in the turnover, only seven points out of it. Time and possession in favor of Nebraska. We'll be right back. Hunting with Tim Dottry of Midwest City, Oklahoma. And there you see Benning and Coleman back deep, both with tons of speed. At the very worst, Nebraska should get excellent field position. He bobbles the snap, but there was a penalty flag down. He better hope it's against Oklahoma. I mean, against Nebraska. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Fourth down. Uh, dead ball foul. Whew. Look at Howard. He says, I cannot believe this. I asked him last night, he said, Dick, five years in a row prior to this season, I had one punt block. We've had six blocks this year. His heart stops beating every punt for measure. Here's the adventure. Gets it. And this one is caught by Benning. Benning. Close to midfield, made the most out of it. That was a nifty little return, all things considered, wasn't it? It's the first team I've seen this year using two safeties back to field punts. One is a blocker, the other the fielder. In the first half, they got fouled up and both tried to 
received the ball. This time they got squared away. Good block up in front and pretty good return. Let's see what adjustments they make offensively in running the option. The eye back is Green, the freshman. Nakabika, the fullback in front of him. And they use that fullback. Yeah, they come up the trap up inside. Is the ball loose? No, no, he no, he's down. No, he was down at the uh, inside the 45, and now Jeff is uh, shaken up a little bit. We'll have to put in his brother. Well, Joel Nakabika. That or Schuster has played quite a bit. Yes, today, here he coach. comes in. Yeah. He's a tough kid. When did you ever see a Nebraska fullback who wasn't a tough kid? Yeah, never. Huh? 12 plays, 10 plays, 8 plays, 3 plays. You see the defense got stronger as the game went on. They gained confidence. They found out they could play with these guys, and they have demonstrated that, and so far stuff not fine here. Second and five. Bedro was the motion receiver coming back. Green battling, but he is short of the first down. Probably third and two right in that area with Jones making the stop for the Sooners. Lon Green, a true freshman, broke the school rushing record here. Brent is a true freshman. Rushing for 1,042 coming into this ball game. Only needs 86 yards to become the all-time freshman rusher. Right now, he only needs 39 to go. Good job here, Mr. Hill. Third down and two. Oh. And there's the penalty flag on the play. Green's run was to the 38-yard line, but there's a penalty flag on this one. Goes against the offense, and uh, Jack Arut, uh, you found a fella who electrified some folks watching Nebraska and Oklahoma through the years. Indeed I did, Brent, and I didn't have to check his name tag to get the name right. Johnny Rogers, certainly, you have electrified the crowds here in the heartland. Your impressions of this team this year? Well, I think we have one of the best football teams in the history of the Nebraska well, football right here. now. I have, we have a very good chance of going all the way for another national championship. I think we need to press down for the, for the fourth quarter to get our offense to uh, tune a little bit, but it's hard to stay up on a 300-pound line all game long. I think we'll break them down in the fourth quarter. Now, Brent, you know he captured the Heisman Trophy. What would you make as a plea towards the Heisman people for Tommy Frazier to capture the Heisman Trophy this year? Well, I see quarterbacks and a guy like Tommy. Tommy has done a lot of things. He's a, a very good orchestrator. He's a motivator for our team. He's uh, got a group of uh, first-year guys out there that haven't played before, and we've still got one of the best teams in the nation. He's clearly the most valuable player in Nebraska football, and Nebraska's number one. That makes him a very good candidate for the Heisman Trophy. Well, thanks for stopping by, Brent. Equal time coming up for Eddie George. Let me see. 37 <laughs> running backs have captured the Heisman through the years as opposed to 18 quarterbacks. So Johnny did put his finger on one thing. Quarterback doesn't put glossy numbers up. There are a lot of intangibles. A couple of things that you've really got to like about Tommy Frazier. Number one, last year he sat out the regular season. You remember the blood clot behind the right knee? Came back in the Orange Bowl, led him to that great national championship victory down there with those two drives in the fourth quarter. He's a tremendous leader. The success of this senior class proves that. He sets the screen beautifully this time. And Fogel is the defender who pushes Green out of bounds on the Oklahoma sideline, and the crowd objecting to the enthusiasm over there. Well, hey, they came here prepared to play, and people have said they played some games without emotion this year. They're playing with emotion right now, and, and Fogel's trying to keep them in the ball game, just being aggressive. Yeah, there's one, you know, there are a couple of other awards. You, you know, Frazier could easily be the quarterback of the year, I guess. Yeah. Danny Werfel, certainly of Florida. He's had a great year. Danny Cannell, our good buddy down in Tallahassee, too. So I guess maybe that's an argument. As far as the Doak Walker Award to the top running back, I pretty much think that's Eddie George. Uh, and we'll have to see how the Heisman voters sort it all out. Green is tripped up. He is short of the first down, third down, and again, OU's defense coming up with a big play. That time it was Wendell Davis from Wichita. See the corner, they ran a uh, flanker back motion to shorten the corner to define it for the pitch. That corner came in and Wendell Davis just came right in at the right angle and he got the shoe, made the shoestring tank. Dick, I know that uh, the Nebraska fans don't want us to say this, but folks, Ohio State can play with it. Oh yeah, they hey. show up. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> third, question. Third down now. And 13. And from
from the shotgun Frazier. Good catch. Wide. Ooh, beautiful throw. Delivered it right to it. Beautiful him. throw. I mean, he threw that on a rope, Brent. Excellent pass protection, though. He could set up and concentrate and allow the pattern to develop downfield, read the coverage. Did a nice job on that. He gets back now. Does he say 1,001, 1,002? Throws it in rhythm, right on the money. Good tackle again by Wendell Davis, number 28. So the chains being sorted out there. They got a little hung up over there on the far side. Uh, the officials are going to get this unwound. Here we got we got coaches' telephone cables and chains. And we've got you see they got so many cables over there on the sidelines and. <laughs> They got to get tangled up. They got to get to come on, untie it now. Come on, we'll bring this one back. Here we go. Yeah, we'll take this underneath this telephone line. There we go. Right over the top, and we. <laughs> there will be a fourth down situation if they don't make it, and they'll go for it. Yeah. Oh, hold it. We've got one more snag. <laughs> now look at this. Yeah. Look at this, huh? What? They didn't expect to have to do this today, huh? You know, speaking of the sideline, did you see the Virginia, the guy from the Virginia training staff? No. Did you see him try to trip that guy last week? You no, I him? heard about it, but I didn't see the replay. I like that guy. I want him on my staff. Oh, <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't, Coach. He wins. He wants to win. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> I've got it. I've got Whatever it source. He's been suspended from the Peach Bowl. What's his name? Geek? Oh, Was that his name? Derivity. <laughs> That's yeah, too harsh. Uh, they did it. Too harsh. Down, Actually, he probably did, he did that, that without any medication. Well, coach, you can't have no. that kind of stuff going on. Now, that's blatant cheating. He did that that's that emotionally. Just saw the guy just stealing somebody's <laughs> plays or something <laughs> like that. You know, that's espionage. But there was another guy did down there. Now, you could have hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I got it that way. <laughs> what do we got here? Fourth down. Good effort. Yeah. First down. That'll be my first. You know, Cedric Jones, the defensive end, is playing a little bit hobbled. Is still in there playing hard, so evidently he sucked it up. And he'll be a, a quality draft choice too. No, he is right well, I there. just think, I, I just think that Cordell Stewart, this year the NFL has made Tommy Frazier a lot of bucks, and I'm happy for it. Tommy uh, was recruited heavily by Notre Dame. You can just imagine Lou Holtz salivating over uh, the chance to have him run that option and. Uh, Decided to come here to Nebraska. He's had a wonderful career. There's the pitch to Phillips. Phillips trying to cut inside and get squared up, and uh, it was jammed. See, I think he audibled and audibled the wrong direction. They were outnumbered out there. See, there was an extra defender. If they go the other way, he has at least even in this one on one situation. Too many people over there in white jerseys. Go the other way. Now Reggie bringing a play in from the uh, Nebraska sideline. Made a nice catch here a few moments ago. Second down and 13. Now it is second down and 13. The ball is right at that 30-yard line of the Sooners. It's a 13-0 score. 9.30 to go here in the third quarter. Double tight ends. Frazier on the release. Intercepted on the sideline. That was a bad pass. And Larry Bush with the interception. Boy, and he is doesn't throw many interceptions. Give credit to Larry Bush for being right there. And actually, Frazier didn't read that properly because he threw it softly. He didn't fire that deep and make the receiver run under it. He just put that out there with a little air in it. But look at this. 22 quarters, 100 passes without throwing an interception. It's at the top of your screen right here. One-on-one -on -one situation. He's backing off. He looks left, looks up, throws it up there. This, see, he did not throw it out in front of him for some reason. Good job by Larry Bush. Well, McGee is back, and in the shotgun, he was shaken up, was given some time, and now he's back, and he'll take off, and he's whacked at the 30-yard line, picking up a couple of yards, hit by Farley out of Columbus, Georgia. There's a linebacker who decided to come out here to Lincoln. They tried a, a tighter flanker alignment that time to try to get the corner to roll up and then work to the tight end, Steve Alexander, back in there, but the, he couldn't find an opening. He held the ball as long as he could, then he turns it into a quarterback draw. Thirteen nothing. OU trying to mount a drive. Mills is the motion receiver. 
now. He's in the slot. They'll make that inside handoff. And Moore with a slick cut back. Now he Boy. spins out to a first down for OU, showing a little spark. He is special. He can make you miss that low center of gravity. The feet are all always apart. When the red jerseys are there, he chops that step and makes the right cut. The direct handoff out of the shotgun. Not expecting it. Bang, he gets it handed off right there. Now, you'll see that wide base, low center of gravity. He can do those kind of things real well. He doesn't have to bend over. Mills is out to the right. McGee fires, and his receiver, Penny, took it away. Nice. That's a heck of a reception. That was a battle over there. Tyrone Williams was right on him, and Penny simply out-muscled him for the first down. Good job. He told me yesterday on the practice field, he said, if you watch me through this ball game, I'm going to come up with a big play. Now, there weren't a lot of yards gained on that play, but it was a big play. It was a physical catch, a tough catch. And enough for a first down. Here it is here again. Another quick look. Two people fighting for the football. The white jersey winner. Nice job, Penny. Now the ball is at the Nebraska 46-yard line, and there it is. Fumble! And fumble! And coming out is Beeland. They will not catch him. Touchdown, Cornhuskers. <laughs> down the defensive score this year. See, Oklahoma, they just shoot themselves in the foot. They're moving the ball. A receiver makes a big play. Good handoff. Their guard's going up in there. He's got the ball a little bit out on the right-hand side, away from his body a little bit. James Allen's 25. It's down the ground. Now, here he is, a former quarterback, playing safety. He's actually played quarterback here, returning it for six-pointer. And so Brown attempting the extra point. Nebraska 20, Oklahoma nothing. Two defensive touchdowns. Hey, Bill and Andy McDowell, two nights of Bill Murray this weekend on ABC. 20 to nothing. There have been two Cornhusker touchdowns scored by the defensive unit here today and a pair of Brown field goals. are favored by 33 coming in here. Brown wails it out of the end zone. So it was back in the first quarter when Jamel Williams put the Cornhuskers on the board. Eric Moore, the left-hander, was at quarterback. Jamel picked it off, dashed down the left sideline, 36 yards. That was their first defensive touchdown moments ago it was the fumble by James Allen scooped up by Tony Veland of Omaha Benson High School 57 yards and now McGee back to work throws high and complete to his tight end who's out of bounds at the 21 yard line that's Stephen Alexander of Chickasha Howard really raves about him he really is the kind of guy that you can build that position around. And he's got a real good young one in Jason Freeman. It's a true freshman. They think it's equally as talented. Those two guys, the rest of the offensive line are seniors. He's got some young kids. He's going to have to get some JC kids. And he's going to have to get a quarterback. Though he has Justin Puente, a true freshman, that they think they can build on. Shotgun with the senior from Tulsa McGee. Flair. Allen. Allen battles to the 23-yard line, and this will put Oklahoma in third and long here in the third quarter. This could be crunch time for this Sooner ball club. What you would call an old-fashioned gut check. Time. Yeah, and, and especially for the defensive team. Wait a minute, you're sitting there on the bench. You've held them scoreless from a def uh, defensive standpoint. Now, here you are down 20 to nothing. Do you keep playing like you've been playing? I think they will. 
You better hope they do, or you got a lot of fill time coming. <laughs> well, hey, you've never been lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a first down to Alexander. He lost the ball, but it's out of bounds. See, they're they going to spot that ball at the 36-yard line deck. They came after him with a blitz last time. They got the one-on-one -on -one coverage. It was picked up nicely. They've been keeping one back in the backfield at all times. It's just sort of a garbage man back there. Pick up the guy that someone beats it and, and get the block. Look, I think Alexander's limping. Yeah, he's coming off. Well, their other tight end, they left home, Michael McDaniel, so they have to come in with Jason Freeman, 86, the true freshman. Rose in at fullback. And he'll lead the way for oh, four. Nice shot. Four was caught from behind by Phil Ellis. Did you see the senior from Grand Island, Nebraska? He pounced on him from behind. See, they walked the linebackers up in tight prior to the snap of the ball, which makes it a little tough for the offensive lineman. He's walked up right inside here. Now he's going to come on the snap. See, they don't pick him up. He comes down from the backside, runs him down. Nice play by Phil Ellis. Academic all big eight. Very good student. Coming from the right side of your screen. He smells it. He smells it. Here I go. Going to make the play. to six minutes in the third. McGee, penalty flag is thrown. McGee has enough for the first down, but there's a penalty flag thrown by the umpire. They're getting a wide outside rush by those ends. The tackles might end up holding. Unbelievable how this team can self-destruct. When you're not quite talented enough, <laughs> you do more of those kind of things. Howard, here's a guy that's holding, coached national holding, championship holding teams looking at this. It's got to be frustrating. Right in the middle of your screen. So holding on the right-hand side right here, you can see it going on. And he's still got a block there. Hey, hey, you know, I'm not so sure we can let Howard completely off the hook on this, okay? You would think that being a quality coach like this, that over the course of a season with a staff, he would have been able to improve this offense. Now, I think given time, he might do something, but I don't think he skates free on this, what's happened with this Oklahoma offense this year. That is one of his specialties. McGee hit oh. it. He releases incomplete. Yeah. And that was Tomich, who's had a whale of a game. I think he second guesses himself in regard to maybe not bringing up redshirt true freshman there. Justin Puente, talented guy, was talented, and, and you know, you say, I've been saving him for the year, I've been saving him to keep that four years of eligibility, and you consider moving him up, they made the decision to keep him on the bench and save those four years, and maybe you could second guess that decision. The, the big thing is they don't have a trigger man. So here we come now, third and forever. <laughs> They're showing a double zone coverage right now. A little hard to throw against that underneath. Oh, what a great grab. And they say it's right there at the 46-yard line by Alexander. Yeah, and it's I mean, no wonder. He's a dandy. That's a first down right at the mark. I'll tell you, he was under pressure and covered, and he just calmly reaches up and grabs this ball. Watch this catch by this youngster. Left side of your screen, and Howard's always going to have a good tight end. He starts his passing game with the tight end. Well, I think he had one foot in. He was in. It's good. Sure, hold oh, the okay. change. All right. Excuse me. Yeah. The well, safety didn't get over there to help, too, Brent. Oh, that's 31 yards. Yeah. Find number 80 and make a living off of him. Intercept. Oh, oh it should have been picked off. He wanted him, and Farley had one in his hands. He dropped. Terrell Farley, he can't believe it. All Big 8 this year, his first year in school. Here it is again. There's a big size mismatch right there, but the ball's thrown perfectly. He caught it right at the forever yard line. Yeah. <laughs> See, they showed a double zone coverage. It's a su I'm surprised that he threw it over there, but they didn't go double zone. They sagged that corner back off. Now on second and ten, and there's that handoff and more with a slick move and more. 
to the 41 yard line and another Oklahoma first down. He is a com compact, intense guy that really likes to run upfield. He doesn't like to run parallel to the line of scrimmage. Now the defense forced him to keep going toward the sideline, but once he gets turned up, he can make you miss. You've got to come to balance on this guy. Moore has 39 yard rushing today. There's Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, and boy, is he a good one. He's had a lot of great defenses here. A lot yeah, of great they, players as well. They got but they were well coached. Coaching staff. Yeah. They like Penn State. Yeah. That's big. That's real big. So now McGee, receivers are covered, and so he'll take off, and he is out of bounds at the 37-yard line, so he picks up nearly five yards on that uh, scramble. Better than throwing the interception. Just as good as a quarterback draw. Now, there are people in Oklahoma that say that Garrick should have been playing all the time, you know, but he's not there all spring, so he doesn't learn the offense. He's not there first half of training camp, so he doesn't get in. He's not healthy and strong when he comes back. Maybe he should have been the guy that they start in the midseason. Yeah, let's see what happens now on second and five. Penny's off to the left. You got Mills there in the slot. Alexander's the tight end to the right. Change up now along the line and they're relaying the signal. They've got to hurry. They've got two seconds left to get it snapped. They make it. McGee fires, and it's low and incomplete to Alexander, who's covered by Terrell Farley again. What they're doing now is trying to move receivers away from the tight end to try to isolate and work back to Steven Alexander because he has been their weapon. Good use of formation, good thought from the offensive coordinator, Gary Nord. I see a penalty flag come down here. See what I'm talking about now? They got three receivers here trying to get the isolation one-on-one -on -one here. Good thought. They get him one-on-one -on -one right there. He just doesn't throw the ball real well. See, he throws it lower in the turf. Dick, that's unbelievable. That was a holding call on that play. That they just, they just backed the Sooners up again. <laughs> I'll tell you, they'd have a hard time scoring against the wind. You know, they just, <laughs> they have struggled. That's all. Second down and forever. <laughs> you said that before in this well, game. Maybe they can hit it again. <laughs> There's McGee. No, sir. One of the same play. Yep. This time it was uh, broken up by Jamel Williams, who picked one off for a touchdown back in the first quarter. If you just came home, just turned on the set, you're watching a Nebraska team that is ranked number one, unbeaten through 10, favored by 33 over Oklahoma. Leads by 20. Both Nebraska touchdowns have been defensive touchdowns. 36, 57 yards. A couple of field goals tossed in. Another great turnout here in Lincoln. This entire state rallies around the football team. Now on defense against the Sooners of Oklahoma. Third down and 20 yards. The pass is to Mills. Oh, Mills still battling. But he's going to take a loss now. Tell you, it was a great effort by Brooks from the defensive right end. He comes in, rushes a passer, reads the screen, runs back out to the outside. Boy, is he playing with great intensity. He's over here on the right side of your screen. I love football players that play this hard all the time. He reads the screen. He's back out into it. Almost makes the play right there. He actually disrupts it, but he's rushing. Then he plays the screen. Nice job. Ooh, good. Dontre drives one. And this is Fulman on the run. Fulman's got a hole. Pullman back to the middle. He's got great speed. Pullman is cut from behind at the 31-yard line. Windu Davis. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Where'd that one come from? <laughs> Windu Davis. I can do that, too. <laughs> Mike Pullman, a tr walk-on transfer from Rutgers University, 5'7", 160, and here he is taking along when he has a 79-yard for a touchdown this year, leading the Big A. Look at just a little guy. They got I a lot believe, of walk-ons here. Dick, I think the fellow who caught him is down at the 30-yard line right now. In fact, both of them appear to be a little bit shaken up. So we'll take a break at Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And Jiffy Lube. If it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it just isn't Jiffy Lube. Lincoln, Nebraska. Weather's been lovely down here, but, uh, well, there go the cars for the getaway. That's it.
He'll never get out. Where is that, folks? Over there, away from the stadium, I hope. This is Lawrence Phillips, who just checked into the game. Bracketed, and I believe he was down already. Yeah, they whistle that ball down at about the uh, 28 yard line. See, they're starting to run some counter action now because Oklahoma defense has pursued so well with direct action, uh, direct action offensive plays. And that counter right there just about got him a nice hole. Coleman, the young man who caught the uh, punt returner, cramps in his calf, we are told, by the sideline. And uh, that appears to be over in that one parking lot adjacent to the railroad tracks. And now if there's the toss to Phillips. Come on, Lord. Keep your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Here's somebody over the stage say, come on, Lord, keep your feet. It's hard to do it when they got a hold of both legs. Like you know, if Nebraska wins today, Coach, and then captures the Fiesta Bowl, that 36-1 and record then would be a college record over three years. Their only loss would be to Florida State in the uh, 94 Orange Bowl. Of course, there's this game, the Fiesta Bowl, and then it'll probably be the winner of the Florida-Florida State game. There's one little asterisk on that, and that is if Florida wins at Arkansas can come up with a monster in the SEC championship game. That would throw things up in the air a bit, but uh, Florida will be a heavy favorite in that game, regardless of what happens tomorrow. Phillips on the toss to the Boy, 20, good three-yard line short of the first down. Good, quick defense again. Darius Johnson, the corner. These corners are well coached in tackling as well as covering. John Tanata really has done a good job of coaching those kids. You know, they've made a lot of key tackles out there in the perimeter. I mean, knifing tackles. So it is fourth down and a yard right now. And let's see what the whiz here. Number 15, Tommy Frazier can come up with. There was movement in the middle of the line. Phillips dives and the penalty Bumble. flag comes down. There is a penalty flag. There was movement in the middle as Phillips went up over the top. So we'll get this all sorted out here by Mr. Turlington. Don't have to block anyone on that one. God. Darn it. <laughs> All sides on the defense. Five yards. Well, welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska. We're at the top of the hour. It's 4 o'clock here in the Midwest, 5 o'clock in the East. For those of you who are watching back there, and of course, a couple hours earlier out in the Pacific Network, we hope you've enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday. This is the Friday afternoon game, Ohio State and Michigan along with Florida and Florida State coming your way on ABC tomorrow. It's 20 to nothing. Cornhuskers with the lead. Frazier to the end zone and throwing off balance with Gilman. I mean, he's complaining down there. He was jostled going on into the end zone and didn't have a chance to uh, to make the catch. Malin Wesley rule incidental contact. Malin Wesley, the safety was over and then they had coverage deep and they had coverage short on him. Had it really bracketed. Very well coached on defense. Boy, you don't, they don't give you anything, at least in this ballgame. Second down and 10 coming up on seven quarters that the Sooners have gone without a touchdown in their last two games. Trap counter there. <laughs> That's a clever play. Get in the shotgun, get the ends to widen out, thinking pass, and then they run the counter trap up inside. Tanner and DeQuazy were not fooled. I have only seen that one other uh, time, Brent, where they got in a shotgun and ran the quarterback on the counter trap. Well, here comes the substitution package from the Nebraska sideline. And this is going to be third and ten. And now time was running down. So it's timeout in Nebraska. It hasn't been a really polished offense that we've been watching here today. They have sputtered a bit when they've had the football. These top-ranked Cornhuskers, and I know, Dick, that, uh, that you thought they'd come in here. But uh, while we've got a break, let's check in on some shows coming your way now on ABC. 
tell you you want both games. You get one of those little dishes. And you watch the NFL every Sunday. You call those folks, and they've got the package, too. And then it'll be the Skins game. There's four great players, huh? Jacobson, Pavin, how about his guts this year? Couples, Watson tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern. Tom Watson has to be happy that both Kansas and Kansas State have played as well as they have. Congratulations to Glenn Mason. He was the coach of the year in the Big 8. Did a heck of a job of uh, bringing the Jayhawks back. Hired a couple of coaches away from the Colorado staff after McCarthy stepped down. And now rolling into the plate. No place to throw the ball. Three white jerseys covering two red jerseys. Excellent pursuit, good coverage, no one placed. I'm actually surprised he threw that ball. He could have tucked it under maybe and run up there just a little bit more. You know, you're really hoping something good happens when you see the running across a crossing pattern. There's four white jerseys, two right there. No place to throw the football. So field goal time now for uh, Mr. Brown. Chris has hit a couple already today from 31 to 27 and this is the 35 yarder there's three more points so mr osborne maybe you heard what he said when he learned that he was a 33 point favorite tom osborne said 33 Judas Priest. <laughs> That's as profane as Mr. Osborne ever gets, but he's within 10 now. Can you imagine coaching here 23 years? Nine wins, average 10 wins, every season nine or better, average 10. Unbelievable. Uh, it's, Nobody does it any it's better. It's just a great program. And yeah, he, yeah. It's just so quiet. Yeah. You, you, know, you come in, yeah. and it, you know, there's not They're much so emotion there. He's created his own. Yeah. Problem though, because now the people around here are not satisfied with just Big Eight championships. They want it all. Some of the folks in the crowd are feeding Jack a root. Are they? Yeah, there's tortillas there. You know, they're reminding <laughs> them of let's go to the Fiesta Bowl, I guess. Huh? <laughs> well, you don't get hurt as much as when they were throwing oranges and all those things on the field, yeah. right? <laughs> there they are. Well, they're within uh, 15 minutes and 28 seconds. Getting ready for that Fiesta Bowl against who knows who when the Alliance sorts everything on out. And Brown nails it behind the wind into the end zone. Jack Arut, what's up with that blaze over there, partner? Well, Brent, you made me panic, thinking we might have lost our ride back to Omaha, <laughs> but that's not the case. I hoofed it over here, and this is a first for me in college football, covering a fire. It seems a portage john in one of the outlying parking areas. <laughs> Obviously, somebody decided to smoke when he went inside and leveled the thing. Now, let me see, I'm counting two, four, six, eight, twelve, fourteen firemen, three rescue, a truck. They didn't... They didn't bring the ladder truck, though. They bring any plumbers? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is McGee. He, good. Oh, incomplete. And uh, very close to being over the line. Oh, he, uh, when he threw that ball. Yeah. This kid's had a real good career. Came in here the fourth receiver in Jack. the history of Oklahoma. Hey, Jack, are you going to be able to get back over here safely? Yeah, Brent. Jack, they did bring the ladder truck in case there was a fire on the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, get him to give you a ride back over. That's a long walk. <laughs> That's it. You'll probably head for Omaha early, honestly. Take yeah. the cars. <laughs> yeah. Brent, who is this? <laughs> Jack's been known to do that. No, he splits on us. They're coming after him. Yeah, well, here's the handoff against that coach, and uh, Moore's going to try. He just. I'll tell you that the Nebraska defense is so good with that speed on this carpet. Yeah. You just, they don't let you get turned up field. They have great speed, and remember, the outside linebackers are really safeties converted to play outside linebackers, so everybody has good speed. You see right there, Terrell Farley, 43. He, he's a 6'1", 205. Minter, the safety number 10, comes up and makes the play. They're playing a six-pack all the time, so they can all run. Yeah, well, listen. I know what we six need. pack is means something else to you. But <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hoof it. And he's got it out of, oh, out of bounds. Stepped out of, stepped out of bounds at the 19-yard uh, line, 24-yard line, actually. Got a punt. That's it. Yeah. Here comes 
Here comes an adventure. He just stayed in bounds. Yeah, it looked and like he, I didn't see him being forced out of bounds. He must just the momentum of making the turn just pushed him out, I guess. But it looked like he could have stayed. Well, let's see if Fullman, number 12, or Benning. Oh, my goodness, picks it up off the carpet. That's and gets a return tight nice ball, too, but to get one block. It's a ball flew low. The middle was open. There's a penalty flag, right. another penalty flag. They're flying all over the way. Save oh, your energy. Coming back. Breaks a tackle. Fun to watch, nevertheless, and crashes into an equipment truck over here on the Oklahoma sideline, and quickly, their medical staff rushes to his assistant. Let's hope, assistance, let's hope that he's all right down there. You can see that the uh, the Oklahoma doctor jumped right in. I'm assuming that that one fella is in I've watched him operate down there on that sideline because he crashed into that trunk yeah. down there. Let's, let's, let's take a look at this. He was, he was going have a pretty good head of steam and they seem to lose his balance and uh, hard to tell from that picture he's in behind uh, one more look at it it's okay that's good to say huh Let's see, though. Remember, we had a lot of yellow out there. So, uh, Mr. Turlington. Push in the back. On the return. 10-yard penalty. Spot of the foul. We will have an untimed down. An untimed down means that the clock has already run out on the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that one, he says. <laughs> Tough enough. I yeah. hadn't plays with these guys. They had to have more than one penalty on that because they couldn't have all seen the same push. There was about five flags thrown. So uh, they will complete the third quarter with this untimed play. Well, they need 11 points, the Huskers do, to become the all-time NCAA <laughs> scoring <laughs> champion in terms of average points per game, breaking their own. <laughs> and they haven't scored a touchdown yet, and they could still end up doing it. You know? I, I, when you said that, I said, what is in the world is he into this week? <laughs> I mean, I th what in the world did you go do? I yeah. mean, yeah. you know, for some folks, 10 will do. <laughs> <laughs> First down now. And there was Clinton Childs with a carry from scrimmage young man out of Omaha North. The senior gets to come in at I back right now. And we've come to the end of the third. Back for the final 15 minutes after this message and a word from our EB. The fourth quarter. Nebraska leading Oklahoma. 23 to nothing. And the Sooners have gone nine straight quarters without a score. They used to call it, once upon a time, about six, seven, eight years ago, Sooner Magic. But the fellow who coined that phrase, Barry Switzer, is now coaching the Dallas Cowboys. And so the Sooners face a tremendous uphill battle against the team rated number one, Joel Makavica, the freshman fullback, brother of Jeff, pulls right straight ahead near midfield. You can see here, Nebraska has been slowing down. They had 211 total offense in the first half, so they net 21 yards in the third quarter. Oklahoma doing a good job picking up, but they keep doing this. They keep turning it over. Go! For some, it's already... Autograph. And that was good enough for a first down, that carry by Joel. Lead it by 23, near midfield, and Frazier. A lot of Heisman Trophy voters waiting for this final weekend to watch not only Tommy, but Eddie George tomorrow against Michigan. And this is Childs, who had checked in. Clinton's a senior, getting some carries now for Coach Osborne, who is at least... Four quality players deep at that I-back spot. We yes. have watched Amon Green, the starter. 
Then there's the great Lawrence Phillips, the junior who was reinstated a few weeks back. We have watched Damon Benning, a junior out of Omaha Northwest, return some punts. And now Clinton Childs has been into that backfield. Cluster Johnson brings the play on in for the sideline. Reggie Ball goes on out to the left side. Holbein is also out here to the right. Three wide receivers now for Frazier on second down and four. Frazier with a penalty flag over here thrown by the linesman. Childs for what would be a first down, but hold on, there is a penalty. Penalty flag on the play. Boy, Terrell Peters, the inside linebacker, has played awfully well today. I don't know how many tackles he's made, but he's been in on a lot of them, and he's ruined some plays, too. He's forced early pitches coming inside out on the quarterback. He's passed up the quarterback and gone on and made the tackle on the pitch man. He's played excellent football. And it's against the Sooners. Offside on the defense. Big this has been one of Coach Snellenberger's problems all season long with these Sooners. There we are. Nine penalties for almost 100 yards against Oklahoma. That gives them better than 100 penalties on the season. And Frazier throwing left side. Got it. Yeah. Touchdown. John Federal of Gregory, South Dakota, at the scoring end. Boy, he threw that one nicely. He did a nice job with that action, too, Brent. He ran a little fake inside to hook the free safety over there and then just threw the seam pattern here to the right side of your screen. They run the action to freeze the safety. They keep the safety here, number five, right in the middle with the little action. See, he comes right down the hash. Now he comes back out right and coming down the other hash inside, inside the other safety, he takes it in for the six points. Nice play, good execution. Beat the defense that time. It was a zone, a zone three deep. Perfect throw, perfect call. And Brown gives Nebraska a 30-point lead with 14-12 to go. Number one team in the nation with its first offensive touchdown of the day. Tommy Frazier, the Heisman Trophy finalist, whips a touchdown. And now Mills hopes to get his hands on a kickoff return. Big bounce, got it just inside the goal. In trouble, great speed, spins free. Oh, down at the 11-yard line, Mike Fullman, the return man, got down on Mills and gave him a lick. Well, that touchdown play, it was a great call, good formation against the three deep. Here's one receiver, one receiver, one receiver, so they have three of them. He hits the seam in between the strong safety and the free safety. Nice action to help hold the free safety. Now you'll see the two safeties working over there, and he's right in that zone. Have to throw that perfectly, and Tommy did it. The crowd smells blood. Sitting on a 30-point lead, and baby, do they want more right now. Couple of yards, and no more. You know, I saw Billy Sims like you did back at the hotel when the OU team was coming out. He, of course, is one of the Hall of Fame inductees this year. So, Rich Glover, a great name from Nebraska, was a great lineman back in the 70s, will also be inducted. And that award ceremony takes place in New York in December. Congratulations to, to both of them. There are some great names, including Jim Brown of Syracuse. Right now, this crowd wants points, points, and more points. And Oklahoma battering it straight ahead to the 15-yard line. It's going to be about third and seven. 
They brought the linebackers from the outside that time, and Terrell Farley came all the way around from the backside, opposite the direction the play was going, and ran it down. Plus, there wasn't much room at the point of attack. That front is very firm. Listen to this crowd, folks. This is the loudest they've been. They're so used to screaming for the offense. They've got a chance to embarrass an old foe. They get two for the price of one. Oklahoma and Howard Schnellenberger, and they want them both right now. Third and seven. Mills has got it first down for the Sooners, and no, he says he's down right there. He said it was on the carpet, and they're bringing it back. It looked good from here, boy. It sure did, but that's me. Got to give the official the benefit of the doubt. He's right looking there. back in. You give it to him. I won't. All right. <laughs> Make it easy. <laughs> Here it comes. Another Sooner punt. Hang on, everybody. I really think, see, they're only, they only have nine people up with two back. Hard to rush them and overload them with that. This time it's Benny. Boy, he attacks. And he got inside the 50 with that attack. So when we come back, Tommy Frazier and the Huskers going to work with a 30 point they have played at Tempe that's the side of the Super Bowl and uh, there was young coach Clayton Carlin giving a, a little pep talk there on the secondary people there Brent first down 30 points there was another time when Nebraska scored 30 on Howard Schnellenberger and it wasn't enough on this day it's going to be enough only the second time that Osborne and Schnellenberger have met. The other time was for everything. Fumble! Still rolling around, and Oklahoma may have pounced on it. Oklahoma that time lined up in a defense and defied them to throw the ball to the slot man. They did not go out and cover him. They put him in a position, the defense to run. Good call by Kurt von Valkenberg, the coordinator. There was no way they could run that out there. A lot of people there. Good call. Then he just drops the football. Then he kicks it around. Scramble. Mark Chase times. went and wrapped it up for the Sooners. And now it will be a first down. First down and 10. Coming out from the 41-yard line. He off the inside fake. Hit on the release, and it is incomplete. Out of bounds, made the catch. The second man, Penny, made the catch. McGee is down. What a catch Penny made, but it's not going to count. He was out of bounds, and uh, Jack Arute, breathless, has come back to Memorial Stadium. Jack? Well, Brent, you know, we had that great Thanksgiving dinner at the Cornhuskers, so what I did is I went down to the, uh, to the uh, restaurant this morning, and I decided to try my hand. Now, what do you do with turkey? How about a turkey sandwich? Cooked you up some turkey soup. Got some turkey salad. Now, that'd go good with the tortilla, don't you think, on the way to the Fiesta Bowl? But what do you do with a drumstick? Well, it's real simple. You wrap it up. You wrap it up and do what you're supposed to do. Beat the drum with it. <laughs> Jack's reaching. Right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's working reaching. hard today, oh, buddy. He is. He's Plus, reaching. he's tired from going all the way where that fire was. He, he was stretching for that one. Got to give credit, you know. Bet, better luck next time, Jack. You don't always call a good no, play. We'll hear from you again, partner. Uh, go next back week, to, go back to the writers <laughs> on that one, will you? 11:20 <laughs> now. Third down. McGee fires and. It was caught, but I'll tell you, they were gambling. Moore came out of the backfield. They were locked on man-to-man, -man, so he could jump that as soon as they went to the straight pattern out toward the sideline. He just jumped that quickly. Nice move by Michael Minner. Yes, the bound. All right, they're all ready, aren't they? Uh, big one out of Gainesville tomorrow, Florida, Florida State, to see who probably plays these Cornhuskers. Ohio State trying to get to the Rose Bowl tomorrow. They get a big one against Michigan. Nice bounce. Good punt. Good, nice job. Oh, they bury that Cornhusker offense back there. Well, Osborne has got to be happy about the fact that he's not going to Florida for a bowl game. 
He was finally able to win one down there last year. You know, they had lost seven straight bowl games prior to that huge come from behind win against Miami. They had a terrible spring of bowl successes. But if you look back and you look at the games, they had to play Miami and Florida State frequently down in the Orange Bowl. And that basically was like going into someone's home arena. Certainly in Miami's case, it is their home arena. But Florida State had it packed with fans down there. This one not quite so tough. They'll be going to the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, both those Florida teams, though, Coach, will be able to play with this Nebraska team, huh? Oh, yes, they can. Yeah. Where are you bet? 142 now, using the pullback right straight ahead, and uh, he is hit beautifully by Peter Peters of Norman. He's had a great game. Well, he has really played, and he's, like I said earlier, he's only a junior. His two uncles, Tony and Terry, played in the secondary in the early 70s for this defensive football team right here. Oh, well, there we are. There's the two games at noon. Certainly, you're going to want to see. You might want to go to the neighborhood. The neighborhood pub might have them both on, or you might call your cable operators, or if you got the little dish, call them. Then don't forget the golf. My man Jacobson, he tailed off just a little bit, but he's had a great year. Haven, couples, hope the back holds up. Watson, I guess Watson's the defending champion in skins, isn't he? Yeah, sure, got him. Second down and eight. And they'll run Green, who's back in, to the six-yard line. So now it'll be third down. After a pickup of two, that brings up third down and six with the ball Eight, on the six, six yards. yard line. No sense, no sense of taking any chances down here. Totally involved in this offense. Calls everything. He's in communication with Frank Solich up in the box, the assistant head coach. Coaches the running backs. It's interesting, Dick. They've lined it up in the shotgun back with, here. With the back cheated back like that, they like to run. Now they audible. But when he's lined up behind the quarterback, they'll run with him from there. Yeah, it's the option. Frazier, that inside uh, yeah. little pitch, they had they had green. They had it set up, and they were looking for that bubble there in the middle, and it didn't open up, he, so Nebraska will punt it. You're right. He was looking for the bubble, and that's where they audible to that direction. So, but uh, when he's lined up a little bit deeper, I noticed in looking at the game tapes that normally it's not a pass. It's one face of the uh, the running game option or that Number shuffle 19, option Jesse right there. Nine straight four. quarters without a score. I didn't think I'd ever see an Oklahoma team go nine straight quarters without a score. They're coming after. Determined to get one. Mills. And he wraps it up at the 40-yard line. So a chance. There is Coach Zellenberger's wife on the Chevrolet. At Magnavox, we make technology people want. Magnavox, smart, very smart. Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. At Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Eight twenty-nine to go. Nebraska, 30. Oklahoma, nothing. The Sooners with the best starting field position of the day. Past midfield at the 41 yard line. McGee from the shotgun. One on one coverage. Penny for a second thought he had it. And Michael Minner, the safety moving over there, was watching the ball, not the receiver. And he could actually, if he'd have watched the receiver and the ball, he could have picked that off. He was moving inside out on it all the way. With the incompletion, that brings up second down and 10 with the ball on the 40 yard line. Jack Root. Well, Brent, you never like to report this. Behind me is Tracy Jensen, and she is being administered to by the paramedics here. Now, Tracy is a University of Nebraska cheerleader. During one of the lifts, when she was up on top of a male cheerleader's shoulders, she fell. They have called for the paramedics. They're going to take her away with an injury to one of the cheerleaders. All right, Jack, let's hope that she's going to be all right. Thank you. This is more of uh, Oklahoma crossing the 30-yard line. That would be a sooner first down. Good check down right there. That's the advantage. If you get the pass rush way upfield like they did, he threw them to that him, the quarterback did, as drew him to him, and then dropped that check down off. There was a lot of space between the receiver and the linebackers that had dropped off. This defensive front has played awfully well today. down 
the delay with Moore and man, not much doing. His Coach, you didn't like that. Oh, Grant Wister, he's so quick. That was a defensive end. He comes up on the rush, comes around, and chases it from behind and makes a play in the hole. Excellent football player, this young man. A 3.6 student in pre-pharmacy. Playing football like that? My gosh. Not going to make many mistakes. You got a prescription to fill. You want to call him? He's not going to make any mistakes. <laughs> you bet. I can work on my team or sell me the right drugs or whatever he's going to do. <laughs> Bringing the backers. High grab over there. And that was Stephen Alexander. Stephen really yanked that one down. He's a nice player. Yeah. He was one of the most highly recruited players in the country coming out of high school. He could do it all. You know, he's, he was actually considered a better defensive football player coming out of high school than he was an offensive football player. Third and eight. Looks like they're coming after him. Yeah, they're bringing both outside backers and dropping the defensive line out. McGee dances away. Keeps oh. it. Oh, did he get belted at the 20-yard line? It'll be about fourth down and one is Jared Tomich. Shot on the play by Jamel Williams. See, they brought the outside linebackers and zone blitz behind it by dropping out a defensive lineman. Now, you said Tomich made the tackle downfield. That's a defensive lineman dropping out of a pass rush position into the coverage. Here he is right here. He'll draw the block, and then he drops back out in zone coverage. Good call. Good changeup. Hard on the offensive lineman. Fourth down. Coming up. And they battle for it. I don't think they made it. Boy, Wistrom again in there plugging the hole as Allen was trying to burrow for the first down. Let's take a look at this young man you like so much. Here he is to the left screen, number 98. Just penetration. He's getting it. He's got two people on him. He just fights, holds ground, draws a crowd. Other people help him. That's his job. Many times you'll teach a defensive lineman with two people on you to drop to your knees and go underneath in submarine. He was strong enough to hold his own. They don't get it. They give it over on downs. 5.49 to go. Nebraska leading it by 30. Howard can't believe it. After all the good offensive teams as he's coached and seen good things happen. Well, I wonder how many times he's gone nine straight quarters without a score. And now... Brooke Berger takes over at quarterback. He's the senior who did such a wonderful job replacing Tommy last year when Tommy went out. This is Phillips. And Phillips is out to the 24-yard line. You watch Berger in, uh, in practice. What do you think of Brooke? I was impressed with him. He throws the ball very well. He's been invited to play in the Hula Bowl. He's going to do that. I think he'd like to take a little shot at the National Football League, but he really wants to be a pilot. He wants to be a commercial pilot and fly for a living. That's, he's got his license already, but he's got a, he needs a lot of hours when you start thinking about a commercial license. Bright young man, academic all conference as well. Does he fly planes yet now? Does yes, he, he has his license? pilot's license. Yeah. Yeah. Here comes the counter gap. Phillips following the lead. Got a hole in Phillips. Exactly. The 31. You, can, you know what Phillips does that you can see? He follows the block beautifully. Yeah. He's, he's very patient. He knows how to run. You can see him wait until it opened up, and then bingo, he's into the hole. That's You'll a nice looking run. You see the big guard and tackle. Now, this one's designed to come outside. It'll be coming right at us, ladies and gentlemen. Big number 67, Aaron Taylor kicking out. There's Dishman 75, and he follows those. He sets them up. This guy is going to play football for a long time. Yeah, I think so. He's a junior from Baldwin Park High School in Southern California. I, I think there's some kids out of there. I think he'll probably go. I think most most talented running backs after they're finished with their junior class if they're mature physically probably should think seriously of it if they've got that kind of talent. I think anybody would tell him that. Berger. And he dances out of bounds at the uh, 30 six-yard line. Jack Arute, how is the uh, young cheerleader? Well, Brent, it's good news. 
The doctor from Nebraska came over, checked her out. They are going to send Tracy Jensen to the hospital for x-rays. She's complaining of some bruised ribs and some lower back pain. But according to the doctor, movement in all of her extremities, she's awake, and she's a little upset that she's going to have to miss the end of this game. All right, Jack, that is uh, that's great news. So she's taken off, and uh, 4.40 to go. So Tracy Jensen, the young woman's name. We wish her nothing but the best. Behind Joel Makavica, the freshman fullback. Another first down to the 45 yard line. Now, four and a half minutes to go. and defense and you can see how highly ranked the three unbeatens are Nebraska Ohio State and Florida okay time to put Dick Vermeil on the spot which of those three teams would you want to coach if you were playing for a national championship I'm say well I haven't best. seen Florida but right now I think I take Ohio State okay second down and seven Barringer on a short drop fires and a diving attempt over there by Reggie Ball, the senior from Bellevue, Nebraska. See, you know, I say that as a coach because you said coach. It's, it's more my style of football in my past career in coaching football. I, was, I didn't coach a lot of offense in terms of option football. UCLA we did because when I took the job over there, they'd been running the wishbone, and we moved it to the veer. Are but you uh, staying in town tonight? Yes. You're in Lincoln? Yes. Oh, you're on your own because I think the Penn State offense could have done a number on this team that I'm watching here today. Last yeah, year, that day, they were awfully good. They were awfully good. I'd say they were. Yeah. First, but I'll see you, Coach. Let me know how it goes tonight. <laughs> <First> <laughs> and, and, see, and the Huskers now to the uh, 36 yard line. They're starting to take them on up inside between the even set defensive tackles with trap plays, center blocking back, guard pulling, and trapping the, the lineman that's been coming up field thinking about options. Jeff McAvick, Joel McAvick, two young fullbacks, one's a senior, one's a redshirt freshman, both walked on, no scholarship. Second down and two. 250 remaining. Cornhuskers up by 30. Phillips, Phillips right, cut back. And now Phillips to the 27 yard line, and that's another first down at the 240 mark. And of course, if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. We'll have scores and highlights from around the country. There was some good action over there. You know, he weighs 220 pounds. They list him at two, uh, 200. He weighs 220. And to be able to get up in a hole that quickly and then square your feet and dart and then keep going upfield like that, that takes a talented athlete. And boy, he has the talent. How about the number of fans of this crowd still in attendance? Yeah, they don't with a score really 30 to nothing. They are not leaving. They want to see if they can break the NCAA record. And a few other numbers along the way. Berenger loses it, but he got the handle on it as he was as he was going down that time. Anthony Vogel, number nine, is safety. They brought him all the way up in the line of scrimmage. Oh, Kurt von Malkenberg, the defensive coordinator, is putting 11 people up there. They're not going to get that record on us, he said. <laughs> You know, so, so often people tend to say, well, the offensive team didn't play well today. You know, really, you've got to give a lot of credit to the defensive football team at Oakland. Their coaching staff, they've done a nice job of preparing. Toughest yeah. offense to prepare Think for. Think what this would have been, folks. If, if they, <laughs> It's only 30 to nothing. <laughs> it's a handoff to Phillips and Phillips to the 32-yard line. Well, but, I love you, Phillips. Dick. I love you. You can find something positive in anything, Coach. Well, You're it's great. so hard to prepare for an option offense. It's hard to assimilate it on the practice field you don't see as much offense like this all through the season and for a defense to come in of course they had the week by that helped them a little bit too to come in and play this well and to really take away the option game like they've done you've got to give them credit Receiver downfield, his man's covered. Now he's going to fire it. Working in out of bounds, incomplete. Fourth down. 
He has a good arm on him. He snapped that one off just a little far to the outside, but he snapped it off. You know, he started last year against Oklahoma in the ball game. Had a good game. Second 17 to 23. Touchdown pass. He can throw. This is the formation they hit the seam pass for the touchdown. And they're trying to cover it right now the same way, Brent, but they've moved the safety over toward that third, that slot receiver. out of bounds at the 17 yard line couldn't get the first down Oklahoma takes over with 51 seconds and trailing it by 30 that was the shuffle option where he has the option of uh, pitching it forward or keeping the ball well Dick here are your genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game you raved about Tyrell Peters on that Oklahoma defense today and certainly Grant Wisdom of Nebraska. Very, very a couple deserving. of the defensive guys. Very, very deserving awards. So Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Uh, what happened here? They measured and they gave it to him? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey. Well, they got I didn't 51 think seconds got to the break corner. the record. Oh, hold on, everybody. Those of you that are leaving the room, come on back. <laughs> no, don't go away. Hope you didn't. I hope you didn't turn the TV off. They came in averaging 53.9 points a game. It's 51 seconds to go. It's a handoff to the fullback, and he. Blast his way! Touchdown! He did it! Woo! Oh, That's baby! That's Joel Makovica picks it up. <laughs> Judas Priest, they've done it. <laughs> A new NCAA record. Oh, baby! Unbelievable effort. That's character. That's character. That's not coaching. Mom and Dad gave him that. Both brothers played that hard. What an outstanding job. He got some blocking at the point. Yes, a little cross block, kick out right there. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, no, he drops his shoulder right here. They're going to take him on. They think they've got him. No, sir. He just keeps right on going. Maybe a penalty. Got a little offensive aid right there. Pushing the runner. Isn't that exciting to see a kid oh, play like great. that? And they did outlaw that back in about 1890. <laughs> <laughs> the first year of your broadcasting career. <laughs> That guy was pushing hard for his buddies back home, wasn't he? Oh, mercy. 37 John, to nothing. John Jackson helped him Sheldon out a little. Sheldon Jackson, good push. Come on. Joined Senior Associate Athletics Director Al Papik in a halftime ceremony honoring former University of Nebraska player Clint Brown, the recipient of a $5,000 Hitachi Promise of Tomorrow teaching scholarship. So certainly congratulations to Clint. His Corn Huskers. Up by 37 points now on a great run by a freshman fullback we're going to be hearing from. Joel Makovica from Brainerd, Nebraska. Blasting his way, refusing to be denied. And now Mills. And if Oklahoma can't score here in the last 30 seconds, they'll close out a season with 10 straight scoreless quarters. This is hard for me to believe. You know, and when it happened the first time, and it hadn't happened in 143 games. <laughs> there is one great football coach. That play is worth taking a look at again. Joel Makaveka. You've got to remember his name. He keeps him going. He keeps him pumping. They don't get his arms wrapped around right in him. Sheldon comes and helps him out. Out to the 31-yard line. That is the freshman Jermaine Pazandi, I believe is how you pronounce it. That was in Louisiana, six foot, 237 pounds for OU, getting a carry here. He's a guy that's lost 70 pounds since high school to be a high school college running back. That's a, that's a half a body. Well, the last regular season game for 21 seniors. And a crushing defeat for Schnellenberger. 
Tom Osborne will seek Howard out. They'll shake hands. Miss Osborne has always been a class act. And Howard will attempt to regroup the Sooners and come back next year. 37-0, number one rolls. So long.